What's happening, Facebook family and friends? What's going on with y'all? Go ahead, like and share this video. Like and share this video. Why? Because we got some information for you today. We want to talk to you, let y'all know what's going on. Listen, I got these headphones on. I'm screaming and hollering and hooping and hot. It ain't got nothing to do with the headphones. I'm loud, coming in country. How about that? Like and share the video. Come on in. Give us your best church greeting. I was glad when they said on to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Mm, come on. Y'all here? Hey. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's going on, Fire family and friends? It's your girl, Yielded, here in the building doing what we do every Tuesday about this time. We put a little heat to the word on the street. So it's an amazing, amazing day here at the Fire Show with your girl, Yielded. Got an amazing guest in the house. Because we're doing what? Putting a little heat to the word on the street. So imagine this. I got everything you need to know today. I got all the information. I got where you got to go. I got, got all the information about where you need to be. But at the end of the day, I don't like it. Y'all know what your girl does every Tuesday. I put a little heat to the word on the street. Some say I'm petty. Some say I'm crazy. Some say I need to get saved. But either way, I am a yielded vessel unto the Lord. And you are listening to us right here at Raise the Praise 100, where we do what? Praise God all day, every day. What's happening, y'all? Listen, it's your girl Yielded. How y'all doing on this Tuesday afternoon? Listen, this is the day that the Lord had made. I'm gonna go on and shout you. I, hey, this is the day that the Lord had made. Let us rejoice and do what? Be glad in it. And if y'all sanctified and y'all saved and y'all good Baptist folks, you say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt. I'm not going to do that to y'all. Hey, it's Tuesday. What's going on, folks? What's going on, friends? What's going on, family? What is happening on this Tuesday in your life? What are you thankful for? What are you grateful for? What do you want to talk about? I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about today. I want to give y'all all of the good news and all the good information. Y'all know you got this, uh, Man, the fire show, we do what? We bring you all of this good. Listen. What's up, it's your boy, Cousin Al, and you can catch me right here on the fire show every Tuesday from 4 to 7. You can put your, uh, when I turn the mic on, you're going to have to put your headphones on. I am the dedicated newscast host, and I'm dedicated to bringing you what CBS won't confess. I do what Channel 2 won't do, and I already saw what Channel 13 ain't seen yet. So join us every Tuesday, 4 to 7, on RaiseTheBraise100.com, where we bring heat to the street. Y'all heard it right there. That's your boy, Cousin Al. Don't you go anywhere. It's 403. We're going to get into the dedicated news in just a little while. But we want y'all to know that we got some folks rocking with us. We're here at the Fire Show every Tuesday, 4 to 7 p.m. We put a little heat to the word on the street. We add a little petty to your betty. We do all kinds of things. We go petty Riley on your petty Pendergrass, whoever, whatever. We do what we do. But listen, I got folks. I'm not by myself. I got folks rocking with me. You don't believe me? Listen. Yeah, this is Jay And with and Jamie, on video. We're from Houston, Texas. How can we kill this? Worldwide. It's your boy, Uncle Lowe. Black in the Louisiana. And I'm rocking with you on the fire show, baby. Oh, yeah. I am Morticia Sherman from Houston, Texas. Rocking with Yielded on the fire show. Hey, it's your girl, Kay with the G of the I Am Talitha Kume Show, coming to you live from Las Vegas. I really just want to give a shout out to Yielded, the fire that she is putting out there. That is such an inspirational show, uh, so positive, so upbeat, and I'm listening to it. And just say hello so I know you're there. Day. Say hello. She is a great host. And I say hi to me. Let me know where you're watching or listening from. Go ahead, you type it on the screen. I can talk to you. This is Wilson Mayfield and Office Jones. What's wrong with my sis here on the show? My name is Colette Johnson from Lampadocious, Texas, and I'm rocking with Yielded on the Fire Show. Hey, everybody, this is Chef Sundre from New Orleans, Louisiana, rocking with Yielded on the Fire Show. That was cracking planet earth. This your boy Grimm, comedian, author, blah, blah, blah. It ain't about me. It's about my girl Yielded on a fire show right here on Raise the Praise 100. Last week, the week, we had a rocking with Yielded on the fire show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's your boy, Lisa. What up, everybody? I'm <laughs> Worldwide 
look at him. She keep bringing that blaze to fire stone. Oh, we. So y'all keep it fire. Keep it made. Keep that love. Nigga, you keep bringing that fire, lady. Oh, we. So we have What's up, Mrs. Boyka? You can come to the album, keep them sexy, and I'm talking with my girl, you on the top of the show. You can see the baby, I want to say. I'm from Seattle, Washington, and I'm rocking the gildas on the fire stone. It ain't one of them, it's one of them. The next time, and I'm rocking with my girl, you, and then that fire show all the time. Uh huh. That's right. Hey, hey, all right, y'all, listen, those are all my people, y'all. Where y'all at? You know why you didn't hear your name? Because you didn't send me your drop. So if you're rocking with your girl Yielded, go ahead and record yourself saying, hey, this is me rocking with your girl Yielded from, you know, wherever you are in this great big old world. And uh, send it to me at yieldedmedia at gmail. Um, that's why I E L D E D media at gmail.com. And we're going to get you in and get you on. Thing. What's happening? What's happening? I got my girl over here in the virtual space. What's up? It's my girl Janice, last name Harris, rocking with my with me. Yield it. That's what she said. What's up, Janice? What's happening? What's cracking, y'all? What's going on? Listen, it's your girl Yielded, y'all. Y'all know I'm always super excited to be here every Tuesday. I mean, I act like it's the first day of school every time I come. I put on my new clothes. I ain't gonna lie and say I put on new clothes. I ain't got no new clothes. I um so, Miss Janice, don't be on here talking about you sent me something and I ain't send it. You you sent me a voice message that I could not use, Miss Janice. So I made you something that ain't nobody else got. See, this is why you see you give people special privileges and they don't know how to act. And so let me just show with Miss Janice, and I'm gonna play this on the radio too. So I gotta show Miss Janice because she just talks too much trash. Ooh, it's the fire show. Hey guys. Janice Harris here from Houston, Texas. H-Town, rocking with you then on the Fire Show. Person that has a commercial like that. So, you know, you, you just got to give people, you know, what they need. But look, y'all, we got a special guest already in the virtual space. I mean, in, our, in the building with us. She's not in the virtual space. We're going to drop out for real quick and play a little bit of music. And we coming right back. Don't get into the national holidays. And y'all already know Cousin Al got the dedicated news for y'all. So don't go nowhere. Don't touch that dial. But listen, the Bible says that he that had an ear, let him hear. So grab the neighbor, the cousin, the frog, the dog, whoever. Get him in here. Get him on here. Because we got something to say. But it's your girl, Yielded, right here. Raise the praise one. Keep it locked where we're praising God all day, every day. We'll be back, y'all. All right. How you feeling? Hey. Y'all can't listen to this. Why? Go ahead and like and share this video. I'm going to turn the music down. Because, you know, even though we're a radio station, Facebook be acting up. They be trying to tell people stuff and saying we can't do this. So, in the meantime and in between time, I'm going to drop y'all a commercial over here. Y'all all right with that? I got some good stuff for y'all. Don't go nowhere, okay? Are you looking for an amazing worship experience? Well, Jeez Bobby Productions presents the Giant Gospel Concert 2024. This is going to be the event of the year featuring Pastor John P. Key. Also, artists such as Kelante Gavin, Zacardi Cortez, Luther Barnes and the Sunset Jubilers, Lisa Noel Smith and the Brown Singers, Dr. McKenzie and the Highlights, the Group Fire and the Canton Spirituals, and hosted by the country preacher Carl Carlos Daniels. You don't want to miss it. Get your tickets now. Tickets are available on Eventbrite, TicketWebs.com, also at J5Productions.Company.Site. What are you waiting for? Get your tickets, and we look forward to seeing you there. Ooh, 
It's the fire show. I'm your head digging, digging two snakes. But shout out Louisiana. I'm hanging with you. Are you or someone you love struggling with an addiction to drugs or alcohol and want to be set free from the chains of addiction? Then call Addiction Helpline America right now to get the help you need. From drug and alcohol addiction to dual diagnosis treatment, we provide a confidential helpline to help people like you get sober and live happy, substance-free lives. With one call, you can be on the phone with addiction specialists across the country who will guide you on the next steps to find the freedom and healing you desperately need. Call Addiction Helpline America at the number below. We provide a confidential helpline to help people like you get sober and live happy, substance-free lives. One phone call today can change your life forever. Don't wait another minute for that right moment to be set free. Take that bold step and call Addiction Helpline America at the number below or visit www.addictionhelplineamerica.com. Call 877-314-1645. up some stuff over there and we got it in under the wrong title but nonetheless we're gonna get it all worked out over here stay with us and it's all working good for you know the good of those that love the lord so don't go nowhere all right we're gonna be right back stay right here for just a moment all right thank y'all so much you're so sweet you're so kind sunday april 14th houston would never be the same it's the Gigantic Gospel Concert 2024, and it's one gigantic lineup featuring Pastor John P. Key, Never shall forget. Kalanze Given. This ain't no ordinary word. Also, Doc McKenzie had the highlight. The Ken Spiritual. Lisa Noel Smith had the Brown Singers. The Cardi Cortez. Luther Barnes at the Sunset Jubilee, the group Fire, and hosted by the country preacher, Carlos Daniel, is Pastor John P. Key. Talante Givens, Zacardi Cortez, and more. Sunday, April 14th, at the Fountain of Praise in Houston. Get your tickets now at TicketWeb.com or Eventbrite.com. Hey, y'all, listen, it's your girl, Yielded. We are here doing what we do, y'all. Um, I got a few technical issues, but don't worry about it. I think it looks good and sounds good to y'all. It might just be under the wrong title, but don't worry about it. We're not talking about lynching by another name today. That's next week's show, so that was a sneak preview. How about that? Y'all all right with that? All right, like and share this video. All right, awesome, awesome. Let me hear about we're going to let y'all hear about 30 seconds of this song here in a minute because it's one of my favorites. So go ahead and say hello. Let me know that you are here. You may be here and I can see your number, but I can't see your name. If you don't say hello, let me know where you're listening or watching from. All right. Can y'all do that for me today? Y'all are amazing. I don't care what they said about y'all last night. They was talking about you. I heard them. They did it. Don't worry about it though. We're gonna let them get in and sing, y'all. All right, listen, we're still out here. 
25th Gospel Soulful Celebration at the Super Bowl. Awesome. Say it again. Someone asked me, are, are you on after Miss Janice? Who's Miss Janice? The Miss Janice is a comment. She's in the choir stand. Hey, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. L listen, if you're watching right here, we have not introduced our guest yet. She will be in and on. And so we will get her in in just a minute. We just now starting the show. Hold your horses. World chemo Sabe. Settle yourselves, people. We getting her in here. We just starting up the show. All right. Here on the fire show, doing what we do every Tuesday, putting a little heat to the word on the street. So, man, it's an amazing, amazing Tuesday. I am super excited to be here. Today is Tuesday, March 12th. Do y'all know that's almost halfway through the month, right? I mean, we're right there. We all the way in the third month, nearly halfway through. I, I don't know. I'm just now, it's some stuff going on. Ah, yeah, I don't know. But don't worry about it. Listen, y'all, we have an amazing, amazing show lined up for you today. For those of you that are in the virtual space, let me shout y'all out. I see y'all over here. Shout out to Beverly over here. Shout out to Miss Janice. She's been here talking and loud and screaming and singing and all of that. Shout out to Shadell all the way in East Texas. Miss Doris. What's happening, dog? You made your way over here. How about that? Look at you. You better be here. Hey, what's going on, man? Again, we are super excited. Listen, you said what? You will always love the commercials, but milk. Oh, you like the milk doesn't body good. Yeah. Milk, that's not my song, so I'm not going to sing it. But yes, what's going on? Shout out to my girl, Tanya Lewis there. Listen, we got some information coming up about Miss Tanya Lewis. We ain't going to share it with y'all right now. Y'all got to stay tuned here to the Fire Show because y'all is nosy, and we're not going to tell y'all. But listen, we're going to jump right over into these national holidays. But for those of y'all that are, what's going on, LaShondra? Oh, all of the saints is here. Y'all better show up for choir rehearsal. So listen. Those of you that are looking at my beautiful face and my bouncy hair, don't worry about it. I got this thing going back and forth and it's messing up my hair, but don't worry about it. I can put a little spit on it and brush it down, a little dip to do or something. Don't worry about it. But for those of you that are over here in the virtual space, I'm getting ready to share some information with y'all that y'all don't necessarily know. I was going to say something else, but I lost my train of thought. But nonetheless, I'm shouting those folks out that are over here. Hello, Miss Nancy Petty. How are you doing? Miss Petty, is that your is that your real last name? Are you Petty? It's Nancy. If that's your real last name, I want to know. So for those of you that are over here, if you can see my lovely face, go ahead and send me a hello. Let me know where you are looking and listening from. So for those of you that are listening on the app or on the website, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking to the people over here in the choir stand. So this space that you are in is the choir stand, which means you can talk the entire time, just like y'all do at church behind the preacher's back. You talk past candy cookies, peppermints, all sorts of things. But nonetheless, we are here and we are glad you are here. Please drop your comments and your questions and everything miss nancy petty i'm miss nancy petty we have to meet because people call me petty and i'm not kin to you so i need to know why your last name is petty i need to know the petty people that is hilarious to me um yeah i'm yeah don't worry about it but we drop your comments over here we gonna have a an amazing conversation today so for those of you that are in the choir stand you can sing you can right now miss janice is leading the choir she's singing a solo she's leading it because she is commenting the most so you're either a singer or a commenter commenter is just someone who comments how about that so go ahead and comment look you looking and listening from your daddy's recliner all the way in sunnyside texas Listen, get out your daddy's recliner and go in there and make a sandwich or something and bring me something, find me a little piece of fish or something. I'm hungry. But look, y'all, we're going to get right on over into these national holidays. Hey, Miss Petty, how are you? You're all the way in Alabama. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for listening. What part of Alabama? Listen, y'all, and if y'all looking over here, y'all see a title on the screen that says lynching uh, by another name. That's next week's show. So if y'all want to talk about lynching and know what we're going to be talking about next week, make sure y'all tune in. I got excited when I got in here. My guests got here and I just started clicking the wrong button. So don't worry about it. Just pray for me. How about that? So um, 
Yeah, that's what we're going to do. But we're going to jump into these national holidays. Um, today is uh, March the 12th. Again, national holidays. I did not make these up. I'm reading these directly from the website. So if you got a problem, call National Holiday People Nim at 1-800-NationalHolidayPeopleNim.com or something. I don't know what that number is. But today is National Girl Scout Day. How many of y'all got some Girl Scout cookies? Dallas made me buy three boxes on Saturday. Three boxes. What's your favorite Girl Scout cookies? Go ahead and type it on the screen and call me. 346-355-0100. What's your favorite Girl Scout cookies? Uh, Dallas bought some lemon lemonade cookies, uh, the Caramel Delights, and we got something new, a uh, cinnamon toast. I don't think that's the name of it, but it tastes like cinnamon toast crunch. And I think it's a piece of bread, so it might be cinnamon toast. But we got some of those, and we got them at the house, and he's probably eaten almost all of them, and we just got them on Saturday. Um, today is also Equal Pay Day. Learn about the history of a long struggle for equality and how it carries today. We're not going to dive into that. That's next week's conversation, lynching by another name. So I'm gonna keep dropping that for y'all to pay attention. Today is also National Baked Scallop Day. Y'all eat scallops? I love scallops. I don't know that I've ever had them baked. I've always had them grilled or sauteed, but never baked. National Plant of Flower Day. Sounds like outside worms and bugs, not doing that. Mm -hmm. National Organize Your Home Office Day. Ah, Listen, my home office is nice and clean because I haven't worked in it in probably two years. Don't go upstairs, don't go in there, but it's my office and it's clean, so yeah. National Work Day Against cy Cyber Censorship. That's a tongue twister against cyber censorship. I'm not saying that again. I'm not going to do it. Listen, it's also National World Glaucoma Day. Put your glasses on to discover that there's all kinds of things to know about the eye and diseases of the eye. Uh-huh. Yeah, y'all learn all of this. National Christian Day. Not Christian as in holiness, but somebody named Christian. So if you know somebody named Christian, call them and tell them, hey, it's your national day. It's your national holiday. Speaking of calling somebody you know and telling them happy something. Hey, listen, shout out to my girl, Beverly Hanks. It's her birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I got to learn the rest of that song because that's all I know. I heard it on social media and that's all I know because I can sing um, 50 cents. Go shawty, and then I'm going to get in trouble. So we're not going to do that. Uh, but it's your birthday. Sip uh, yeah, whatever the song says. We're not saying that today either. But listen, shout out to, don't tell me don't sing. The Bible says, the Bible says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, uh-huh. Sing unto God with the voice of triumph. That's what the Bible says. So don't tell me that I can sing because you sings. And that's, I can't stand people that think because they can sing, they can tell you not to sing. I, I don't like it. When God bless you with a gift, then you criticize other people's gifts. My gift's going to make room for me. Shout out to Beverly. Beverly says thank you over there. I've been singing to Beverly all day. Y'all go follow Beverly. Go on my page and see my post where I was singing to Beverly this morning early before I combed my hair, before I washed my face, and before I brushed my teeth and all of that. I had sang to my friend. Go over there and check it out. But um, those are the national holidays for today. And so what I'm going to do right now, because I always like to get the expression on my guest's face when they hear the news. Y'all all watch the news at home and y'all all do all of this stuff with your news at home. And so but my news is a little different. And so before I, I, I go into the news, I'm going to bring in my guest because she's already here. She's been here since before y'all. She got here before y'all got here. I know she got here before y'all because I hadn't even went. I, look at here. They better. Y'all better shout out. Look, look at Petty. I mean, Miss Petty. I mean, Nancy. I mean, hey, <laughs> Nancy. She's saying happy birthday to you, Beverly. Happy birthday. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, can I what? Can I shout out your uncle? Hey, Pastor Alvin Moulton, bless you, man of God, for all of the things that you do in the body, because I know if you pass to some of us, the Lord deserves to give you extra everything, because Pastor and us is not good. So shout out to you, Pastor Alvin Moulton. God bless you and your ministry, God, uh, man of God, and we appreciate you. And if you can to LaShondra, we know we, you need some extra prayer. So shout out to you, Pastor Alvin Moulton. Yes, yes, yes. Now look at Janice. Yes, the Lord that woke me up. What woke you up? My singing. Yeah. See the saints. Happy birthday to Beverly. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and introduce our guest. We're going to bring her on into the virtual space. So uh, listen, like the saints would say, I'm going to go real Baptist on you. We want to introduce the song. Mm -hmm. 
and we want to present to others. Uh huh. Y'all already clapping because this your your friend, this your new cousin, this your new friend that's gonna share some information with you. We're gonna go ahead and add her on in and welcome her. Welcome, welcome for the very first time to the Fire Show, Miss Cheryl. How are you, Miss Cheryl? Hey, I'm great. How's everyone doing? Awesome, awesome. Listen, it's an amazing time here at the Fire Show, and Miss Cheryl, yes. you already got folk over here looking for you. They calling, they texting, they on my beeper, they on my right. home pilot, they on my Blackberry, they on every mm -hmm. device there is trying to see you. And so that's oh, Miss Petty, not that's your sister. Yes. Miss Petty, your that's, sister. Yes, she's she ain't sister. even tell me that. She just told that me that was her last name. <laughs> well, hey, sis, Miss Petty, we need to talk. I this name is hilarious. This name, I think we're cousins because I'm petty. I mean, I'm not a petty, but I'm petty. So, yeah, anyway, don't worry about it. But, uh, yes, welcome, welcome again to the fire show, Miss Cheryl. Welcome, welcome. Hey, thank you. Awesome. So, we're gonna dive into this conversation. So, we're gonna get Miss Cheryl on that mic that she left over there. You, you gotta pull your mic over here with you, that big old black thing right there. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on into the mic. Yeah, bam. Now say hey right to the people on the radio. Hey, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here on this afternoon. Thank you guys for joining us. I know I have family and friends who are listening and who are going to be a part of the show. And thank you so much to Yielded. I really appreciate the invitation to be able to come and talk about my new book, No Ordinary Sunday. She, she done jumped the gun on me. I all just right. said say hey to the people. Okay. That's all. Hey, y'all. All right. Hey, all. Listen, y'all ain't even supposed to. Y'all ain't even supposed to know nothing, but just she here. So we're going to jump right on into the news, if that's all right with you all. So don't go nowhere. Don't touch it. We got news. All right. So here we go. Here we go with the dedicated news. <laughs> What's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Cousin Mel, right here on the Fire Show with your dedicated news. Y'all, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I just... This hour that messed me up, this spring forward, I think it and took a few of my brain cells and sent them to glory. Let me tell y'all, it, it's a rough out here. I'm telling you, I don't even know what the day is. I don't know the season. I don't know nothing. I've been singing Negro spiritually, eating Valentine candy with my Christmas socks on. Run my intro. All right, number three. Let's jump into this thing like it's a pool on a saved and silly cruise. Y'all book your cabins, right? Shameless plug. So I listen, Halle Bailey, Halle Bailey, best known for playing the Little Mermaid, um, has come forth and made some pretty spot on statements straight from the hip from her heart about her situation of being a mother and why she did not come forth telling the whole social media and the whole world that she was with child. Well, if you remember back when they were going to nominate her for awards, people said, oh, she's pregnant. They saw the third trimester nose. They saw the big lips and everything. And she said, hey, I'm a black girl. We have big nose. We have full lips. What are you talking about? Yeah. She wasn't tripping on it. She kept saying it wasn't true. Up. Then we find out, ears. yeah, it was true. She but was crazy. But she said, guess what? It wasn't nobody business. So this is what she said at a award ceremony this past weekend. And to be real, one of the biggest challenges too cannot compare to the biggest joy of my life. And that was becoming a mom to my perfect little angel, Halo. <laughs> These lessons, some hard, that I've shared with you today, led me to a place of protection. There was no way in hell I was going to share the biggest joy of my world with anyone. Halo was my gift. He is the greatest blessing. And I had no obligation to expose him, me, or my family to that unknown spot. <laughs> You heard that, didn't you? Let me tell you something. She said, look, it wasn't nobody's business. She said that was her gift. That was her baby, her body. My cousin, she could do the same thing. She ain't tell us she was pregnant until she had the baby. And she was trying to find out. Well, she was really trying to find out who was the baby daddy, if it was Roberts or if it... Um, 
Anyway, she's trying to figure out some things concerning the baby, so she ain't tell us nothing. We thought it was stubborn belly fat, you know, and she needed to go get some old Zimpic and pop that thing out. But it was a whole baby inside of her. But guess what? She didn't say nothing until she was ready to say something. So it's your body. You can do what you want. Now, if you know the song, it's another song that say, it's my, I can do what I want. And, and, and I ain't gonna say that on this because it's a it's a Christian radio station and I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> with yielded in the Lord. So I'm gonna yield to his will, her will, and thine will and, and just just wheel me over to the next story. All right, number two. Speaking of will, y'all need to go ahead and put in y'all will who you want to carry you to your final resting place because these funerals are getting out of control. People literally dropping caskets, bodies flying everywhere, rolling on the river. It, it's becoming ridiculous, y'all. I saw a video and it really it broke my heart, and I didn't laugh. Well, I, I laughed, but I cut the lights off and got under the cover and laughed because my grandma said that mean it don't happen. But um, yeah, we need to make sure that we had the right people in place. Everybody ain't built to be a pallbearer, and in this case, the pallbearers wasn't pallbearers. Unfortunately, we can't hear it because something is issued. Let me tell you This video has haunted me for the past week. Somebody it was it. about 19 pallbearers. You mean to tell me y'all couldn't hold on to that cast? They dropped that thing like it was fries in a fresh batch oh, yeah. of grease. Just, just dropped it around. Y'all couldn't take care of that? You know what? From here on out, everybody that dies in that family needs to be cremated. Since y'all can, can't hold a casket, go ahead and burn them up because you're not already dropped and broke up. So now you need to just go, go ahead and, 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 and do the cremation. Or, or hire y'all some power bearers. You know, go go by Home Depot and get you some folk that can carry something. Because y'all can't do right. That's all I got to say. And what about the honorary power bearers? Maybe they should have helped. What is an honorary power bearer, matter of fact? Because what they supposed to do they just because i went to a funeral one time and one of the paul bears that was on the rear was six months old i say now what he gonna do he can't carry his pacifier let alone on patricia all right number one speaking of dead people getting dropped mike tyson Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson has entered himself into a boxing match. Y'all, I don't know what, what he's thinking. I don't know if he's thinking. All I know is it's coming out this summer. It's going to be on Netflix. And since I'm subscribed, I'm going to watch. But I'm just saying, somebody needs to stop this before it happens. Because, come on, Unc, about 89 years old. He don't need to be out there. But he's confident. He say he's ready. Check this out. Check Unc out, y'all. Just check him out. Check, big boy. Come on, sign the contract. I, I just don't know, y'all. I, I don't know. I don't know. This I'm a little nervous, but I mean, because this man is 94 and a half, and he talking about getting up here and fighting somebody who could be his grandson. Y'all, we go pray. I tell you what, we go pray. From now until the first bell ring. Not only that, not only that, I hear the Lord saying, we going to fast. We're going to fast. We're going to fast until the first bell rings of that match. We are fasting from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. every day until that match gets here. And that basically means you're going to be asleep so you ain't going to eat and God still going to get glory. So that's all that matters. But y'all, uh, I don't know about this. this. This is scaring me, you know. I just don't want to wake up and hear. All right, this has been your boy Cousin Al with your dedicated news. Yield it. Back to you in the studio. Wait, 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 wait. Yildy, 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 Yildy. Listen, listen. Shh. Don't tell nobody I said this. Don't tell nobody I asked this. This between me, you, and, and the 50 states and 
32 countries that can hear this. If you carry conjoined twins on income tax, shh, does that count as one child or two? I'm asking for a friend. You couldn't hear me because stuff was messed up over here. But I was telling Cheryl that um, uh, we going to take your mama to go get a social security check because something's wrong with you, cousin Al. Yeah, y'all, we got all kinds of technical stuff over here. I got stuff all jacked up. Don't worry about it. But we all right. Y'all can, can hear me now. If you can hear, clap your hands. Uh-huh. I ain't going to see you. But listen, y'all, we are back right here. Again, we have an amazing, amazing guest lined up for you on today. Um, Some stuff is working out over here. I know y'all can hear me because we're going to get cousin Al's mama a check. But we got a guest in the house today. And for those of you that are in the virtual space, you've probably seen the title. That is the wrong title. All kinds of stuff is messing up and jacked up over here but don't worry about it just pray for us so again in the virtual in the, in the studio we have miss cheryl battle freeman how are you cheryl say I'm hey to the great hi everyone awesome this us. awesome awesome this is amazing to have you here in the studio and so what i typically like to do before we get into anything that you got going on is i like to to allow the people to know a little bit about you because unfortunately but the way that the mindset of the people is, they don't really care what you do until they know who you are. And most people, people know that, uh, you know, they won't, they, they won't know a little bit about dirt about you before they get into to, to what you do and all of that. So, Miss Cheryl, let me just ask you this. Uh, you live here in the great city with the worst traffic, Houston, Texas. Tell us yes. how long you've been in Houston. Um, first off, just tell us how long you've been in Houston. My entire life. So you are a native Houstonian. Yes. So let's just take a look at your life. You were born here in Houston, um, and we ain't going to go all the way when you was a T-top, but we want to go all the way back just enough to know that you were, uh, come on, somebody say ba battle Freeman sounds like money. <laughs> oh, I'm with it. Listen, you better go with it. Uh, it's cousin Al, so pray anyway. But uh, so you were born here in the in the city of Houston. Um, tell me a little bit about your childhood, what life, without going into too much detail as to why you're here, but just a little bit about your childhood. You went to school and you, you flunked out of your class, you made A's, you did whatever you did. Just tell us about that. Part. Okay, yeah, so I grew up here in Houston. I am a native Houstonian. Uh, spent a portion of my life on the north side of town, moved to the south side, sunny side, in fact, and lived in sunny side for a very long time with the school in sunny side right down the street, Rose Haven, sunny side elementary, went to um, Hartman Math and Science Middle School and also attended Michael E. DeBakey High School for Health Professions. So, awesome, awesome. Look, time. I'm going to come over here. Because I want you to get loud and proud in this microphone. So if you can lean that mic directly oh, towards right. your mouth there. Yeah, because okay. I, I you can't hear me now. Yeah, I can hear you. I want okay. the people on the radio to hear you. You got to right. talk in that microphone. All right, honey. All right. So we got one here and then we got one there. All, All right. right. Gotcha. gotcha. All right. I want to be able to hear you. So so you you what, reared in Sunnyside. Yes. Let, let me just ask a little bit about life in Sunnyside. I mean, you know, most people um, that are not native Houstonians don't really know a whole lot about Sunnyside other than what the news portrays. And I know Sunnyside was listed in one of the um, highly rated crimes or murders in the U.S. at some point. So what was life like for you as a child growing up in Sunnyside? Honestly, Sunnyside for me uh, just has such a wonderful community feel. Yes, I mean, Sunnyside, like I mean, many other and just about every other neighborhood has its challenges. However, I think what sticks out the most to me is just the community feel, the love. When I was a kid, my grandparents were raising myself and my brother and uh, my next door neighbor were, they were like grandparents as well because whatever they said, that was golden in our household because they looked out for all of us. So I, I appreciate my upbringing in Sunnyside. 
Awesome. Awesome. See, listen, now I got some friends say it's all good in the hood. Something good came from the hood and all of that good stuff. And so I believe we got something good right here uh, sitting in the fire in, in the Raise the Praise station uh, with uh, Yielded on the fire show. Now, just a little bit. You graduated from high school. Yes. Did you go off to college? I did. I attended the uh, University of Houston. Okay. And what was your major there? Degree? What did you do? I majored in biology, minor in psychology. So I have a BS in biology. All right. So don't be in here psychologizing me. Don't be <laughs> psychotherapying me. Um, and don't worry about any of these people that you hear me talking to in my head or on the screen. Just know that it's somebody. Okay. Okay. So she, yeah, she got a degree in science and psychology and she gonna be trying to analyze don't therapize me that's what i tell my other uh cohort here at the station she be trying to therapize me don't therapize me i'm i'm okay um the doctor prescribed me medicine and i've been out of it since 1977 as a matter of fact i didn't take any of it and ain't gonna never take none of it i like all of this i'm unmedicated but listen we're gonna delve down a little more into cheryl's life and get them get more of an understanding as to who she is and how she derived at this place that she's at today but i know y'all want to know why she She's here because, again, the title says lynching. That ain't supposed to be it. It's supposed to be mental health, mental uh, healing and insight into that. And so that's where we're going to go. But just now, for a few moments, we're going to go out and listen to a little bit of music and we're going to come back. So don't y'all go nowhere. All right. Keep it locked right here. At Race Praise 100, where we're praising God all day, every day. We'll be back. Don't go nowhere. All right, y'all. Listen, how's it sounding to y'all? Is it all right? I know we got some challenges over here. Somebody broke something, and I'm telling P-Man, they should be fired. They done broke it. But listen, are y'all all right over here? Can y'all hear everything okay? Everything look good, sound good, smell good? If it don't smell good, that's you. You can't smell us. Uh-huh. I think y'all hearing us all right. I see y'all comments, so I think it's all right. Talk to me. Let me know. I'm going to drop a commercial or two. Let me know while I try to work through something. Okay, yes. Thank you, Miss Petty. What's happening? What's up, Soundbox? I see you over there. What's going on? All right, everything is good. All right, I'm going to drop you right back. Okay, Miss Irma. Hey, Miss Irma Garza, how are you? All right, y'all, don't go nowhere. You got folk over here. I'm seeing names I ain't never seen before. These your peoples. <laughs> Can I get a little money? Sunday, April 14th. Houston would never be the same. It's the Gigantic Gospel Concert 2024, and it's one gigantic lineup featuring Pastor John P. Key, Never shall forget. Kalanze Gibbons. This ain't no ordinary world. Also, Doc McKenzie at the highlight. The Ken Spiritual. Lisa Noel Smith at the Brown Singers. The Cardi Cortez. Luther Barnes at the Sunset Jubilee, the group Fire, and hosted by the country preacher, Carlos Daniel. It's Pastor John P. Key. Talante Gibbons, Zacardi Cortez, and more. Sunday, April 14th, at the Fountain of Praise in Houston. Get your tickets now at TicketWeb.com or Eventbrite.com. Can you give us a cup?
Welcome back. It's your girl Yielded right here on the Fire Show, doing what we do every Tuesday, putting a little heat to the word on the street. Rumor has it that mental health is something that we're overlooking. Rumor has it that mental health is not something that we as a race deal with. Rumor has it that, you know, if you know Jesus, that you probably shouldn't go to a therapist, you shouldn't seek counseling, you shouldn't do any of those things. But we're here to delve down into that thing today. Got my guest in here, Miss Cheryl. Miss Cheryl is going to talk about it. She's going to give us a little insight from the inside and then from the outside. And we're doing what we do. You know, we put a little heat on it. So we're going to dig into this thing and catch it on fire. So keep it locked right here at Raise the Praise where we're praising God all day, every day. It's your girl yielded. Hey, y'all. Y'all here? I see y'all. I hear y'all. But listen, let's drop this disclaimer because Miss Cheryl seems like she might be kidding to me and she might cut up a little bit. She might say something she ain't supposed to. So we're going to drop it. Responsibility for the opinions or the statements made by the host or their guests. Statements or show topics are not the necessary belief of the radio station. Street 100 Heat or Raise the Praise 100 Houston. It is not our intention to label, discriminate, or ignore anyone. This radio station takes no responsibility for the opinions of others on the airways. All right. Shout out to P man. He just said whatever Cheryl say and you to say I'm not responsible. So don't call me. But listen, y'all again. Welcome. If you are just getting here, you're late. We've been here since four o'clock. It's four forty five, a quarter till five. And I got Miss Cheryl Battle Freeman in the room. Y'all somebody said that sounds like money. So Miss Cheryl, you are a graduate. Uh, you done got your psychotherapy degree. I, I made that up. And you over here psychologizing the people and all of that good stuff. What's up? Shout out to Melissa over here. We got folk over here they saying hey y'all but miss miss cheryl yes. let's delve down into this and i dropped a few little nuggets out there about mental health and mental illness and all kinds of things you you graduated from university um of of, of houston and you, you went to school and all of that stuff but how is it that i have in my hand this book entitled no ordinary Sunday, y'all. And it's a thick book, too. It's like, how many pages in here, Cheryl? 353 pages. 353 pages. You can start reading a day and read one page a day, and you're going to be all the way in March of next year before you finish. It's almost one year worth of pages in here. And so it says it's based on a true story. And it says one Sunday, unimaginable, unimaginable tragedy tore our family apart but God is still, was still in control. So now, Ms. Cheryl, I didn't drop a couple cliffhangers. I didn't drop a few little things about mental health, mental illness, and all of that. So what I'm going to do, because y'all, 360, how many pages? Four? 53. Okay, 53. I wanted to get y'all all the way to the, the whole year. Read slow the last couple of pages. 350 some odd pages of a true story. Now, we know a little bit about you. Are you married, Miss Sharon? I am married. You're married. How married long have you been beautiful married? Beautiful girls. I've been married over 23 years. Oh, great. Right. Listen, y'all don't know when to clap in this church. That's when <laughs> you're supposed to clap 23 years of marriage and she black. <laughs> oh, oh, I ain't supposed to say that. I'm sorry. Uh, and you, you said you got how many children? We have four beautiful girls and a beautiful girl. Four beautiful girls and a beautiful grandbaby. See, the Lord was kind to me. He gave me boys. So I can punch them. I mean, um, pray for them differently than I would your girls. But listen, 20 some odd years, four children, one grandbaby. Um, and from the looks of this, something may have happened in your life prior to your husband, prior to your children. Um, and you're sitting there looking like new money and yeah, you look blessed and you look like life has been great for you all your life. Is that, is that life has been a bed of roses all your life? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So do you want to start midway through the book? You want to start in the beginning of the book? Do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something I very seldom do is I'm going to let you start the story when you want to start this story. So okay. tell us a little bit about no ordinary Sunday. Okay. So I'm going to do something a little different, a little, um, I guess, atypical. But this is going to be my mode of operatus. So I want to start at the end of the book. That's her M.O., y'all. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what modus operandi is. Yes. Uh -huh. That's what M.O. stands for. I got to help y'all. Y'all, this is a slow church. Now, don't be using big words. If you, come, no, you can use your words. I'm gonna, come on. Come on, sis. I'm sorry. So uh, I want to start at the back of the book and work work my way to the front. Of course, I, I can't explain the whole book because it's 353 pages, but uh, 
I guess this this is one of the main reasons why I'm here this afternoon. Again, thank you to you so much for allowing me to come on here and talk about mental health, mental wellness, mental illness. So I'm going to start from the back of the book. In the back of my book, it, it talks about my victory over the mental health issues that um, I and both my family endured. Uh, and so I want to start just by giving God praise because this is raise the praise. Oh, 100. Come on. You better do it. Praise. And it. So I, I have to start there. I have to start by giving God glory for my story. I, I want to start by letting everyone know I, I, I my, my book is very transparent. It's a very real read and it has a lot of dialogue in it that has brought so many people to tears. It took me over 17 years to write my book. And uh, those years were years of healing for me. So I'm healed. I'm whole. God has blessed Hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. I don't look like what I've been through. You say I look like money. Go ahead and speak it. Come on. Well, you said it and I it. said it again. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't look like what I've been through, but I have been through a lot. And I'm now on the other side. And now I have a story. I have a message. I do want to say I am not a mental health professional. I am not credentialed in that area, that arena. I'm a woman with a story. And my story has received a lot of attention. My story has helped a lot of people. So now I'm working from the, towards the middle of the book, I'm um, talking about a lot of losses that took place following the tragedy. Uh, and those losses really challenged my mental health Every single thing that every bad thing that happened, I would trace it back to that tragic day in August. And every good thing I would think uh, at that time would, would be very, um, it wouldn't last long. It was by, by happenstance or by luck or by chance. And now we're going to move on to the front of the book where I actually uh, will talk a little bit about the tragedy. So I do want everyone to know while my book stems from a tragic um, uh, situation out of a family, from a, a horrific tragedy, it ends well. So I need for everybody to don't stop reading because you're crying a lot. And I, I have so many people that tell me, sure, I can't get past the first few chapters. I'm just in tears. That's because my book is very real, but I, I do encourage everyone to keep reading because that is such a beautiful message at the end of my book. Let's talk about the tragedy itself. Mm -hmm. yielded, if, yes, ma'am. Go we, ahead. We want to go. Um, so I grew up, as I, I told you earlier, on the north side of town, grew up in household with my dad, my mom, and I had two brothers. I was the middle child. I was the only girl, so I had an older brother and I had a younger brother. My mother, my mother struggled with mental health issues for a large portion of her life. And she arrived at a point where she just gave up hope. And she became convinced that God had forsaken her because she had been sick for so long. And her, her thought was if God really was with her and if God really loved her, he would not have allowed her to be sick for so long and suffer for so long. So my mother... Uh, decided to take the lives of everyone in our family. She planned to take the lives of everyone in our family. She believed that this life would offer us no good thing. And uh, that's because we wouldn't be able to do anything good in this life. And she just decided that we would be better off dead. And so one Sunday, my mother decided to carry out her plan to take our lives uh, no ordinary Sunday, that's where the title of my book comes from because it happened on a Sunday. After church, we were at home, my brothers and I were Let, let me, let me, let me, let me interject right here. Yes. It sounds like you really get into a really pivotal place, pivotal yes. place. You said after church. After church. So your family was involved in church. Your mom, your dad, your siblings, y'all went to church, y'all. We went to church. So my dad was the primary breadwinner of our family. So my dad worked many, many hours. 
I will say that my dad did teach my brothers and I how to pray. When we were toddlers, we were on our knees on the side of the bed. And so our dad taught us how to pray. And so that was absolutely a wonderful contribution to my spiritual growth. My mother, she was the one who took us to church. And so we went to church, I mean, religiously, consistently, every single Sunday. That particular Sunday, my mom actually was in church and she said that she had been praying and she was asking God for a sign regarding what she was planning to do. She needed for the Lord to tell her that what she was getting ready to do was a bad thing and she shouldn't do it. My mother said she never did receive that sign that the Lord never spoke with her or spoke to her. And so she decided to carry out her plan to take all of our lives. She poured in my dad's suit and she sent him off to work. And uh, that Sunday afternoon, while my brothers and I were in the backyard playing, my mother was inside uh, ready to carry out her plan. So my brothers and I, we were all just best friends and we did what kids did back in the day. After church, that was our time to hang out with the friends. <laughs> and then once the friends went home, that was our time to just hang out with each other. And we would be in our backyard most days, most afternoons, digging in the dirt. I don't know if you guys remember, like doodle bugs, you know, that's what we did back in the day. Doodle we bugs. Dug, doodle bugs. A little, the little, little black. Gray. Yeah, yeah, black or gray. And they know. roll up in a ball. That's it. Yeah. That's it. My yes. brother used to throw those on me. Uh, oh, go we, ahead. We I'm did sorry. it. We did go, it. Too. I'm sorry. Go yes, ahead. go ahead and confess. I, I've done my share of doing doodle bugs. But um, so that's what we did. Go ahead. That's what we did. We. We, we dug for the doodle bugs and uh, this particular day we were in the dirt we were digging and we were having a good time it was getting late my oldest brother George Anthony all of a sudden drops his dirt he drops his shovel and he says huh and I look up at him I said what's wrong what what what, what happened and he said my head all of a sudden started hurting my and God. so he starts knocking his pants off and his hands off. And, and I can tell he's getting ready to head to the back door. And I asked him, I said, well, wait, are you going to come back? Because it's almost time for us to go in. And he said, yeah, I'm coming back. My head is hurting. I'm going to go in here and get something from mama for my headache. And I'll be back. But let me go get something for my headache. And so I watched my brother walk through that back door and close the back door. Of course, we didn't know what my what our mother had planned, and uh, within uh, a few minutes, I heard a, a gut wrenching scream, which caused me to jump up to my feet, and I began knocking off the dirt off of myself. Unlike my brother, however, I did not go into the back door. I didn't enter our home through that back door. I was led to jump our back gate and run along the sidewalk because I was afraid. I was frightened. I didn't know who was screaming like that. Now tell us again how old you and your siblings are. I was six. Uh -huh. My baby brother was five. And my oldest brother, George Anthony, was nine. Nine, six, and five. Yes. Okay. Nine, Boy, six, yes. and five. Mm -hmm. And as I ran along the side of our home on that sidewalk and I was turning to the right, my mother was exiting our home and she was very disheveled. She was very panicked, um, in hysterics. I mean, she was very frightened. She was afraid. And the look of my mom, it, that frightened me. That made me very afraid. Our eyes met. At that point, my mother was carrying something, and I didn't find out what that was until later on. My mother ran across the street to our neighbor's house, and I did not run after my mother. I instead ran into our home looking for my brother, George Anthony. And uh, my heart was beating fast. I mean, I'm sweating. Dropped down to my knees just trying to catch my breath, my breath, and I was calling out for my brother. And I did not receive a response. And so I moved slowly through our home, looking in each room, looking for my brother, calling out his name, still no response. Finally made it to the back of our home where there is a hallway and the hallway leads to the main bedrooms in our home. And to the left is my brother's bedroom. That's the bedroom that they share. And I stepped into the hallway and I looked to the left. And I stepped into the room and I found my, my nine-year-old brother on the floor. And I froze. I was, 
I, I was seized with fear. I could not move. And my brother's eyes were wide open. I, I still see the image today. His eyes were wide open. And he, of course, wasn't moving. And I couldn't move. And what helped me move was some commotion against the window, the bedroom window, enough noise to break my trance. And I ran. And as I ran, the house is spinning. And I felt like I was going to run into the wall but I was able to run out of our home at that time. And then I ran across the street. I followed my mother's path. I followed the path that I saw my mother go because we needed help for my brother. I was, I was panicked as well. And upon running into my neighbor's garage, the garage door was up. I ran into that garage and I was knocking on that door, which led to their kitchen. I could hear grown-ups inside there, and I could hear my mom. I could hear my mom wailing. I could hear her crying. I could hear so many voices, and I'm just beating on the door. And finally, someone uh, paid attention, and she ran. She opened the door, and she picked me up and ran outside, would not allow me to go into the house. And uh, by that time, unfortunately, my, my neighbor next door, she runs out to the street and she makes this huge announcement that my mom had taken my brother's life. And then people came running from all over. And wow. it, it, that, that day is let me, let etched me, in, my, in my memory. Let, let, me, let me stop you there. And I want to ask this question um, because I, hey guys, I know you guys are listening in. I'm going to open up the phone lines in just a bit um, to allow those of you that would like to call in to ask a question, to share um, any of your insight for those that have read the book. But, but at this moment, before we go to this brief break, I want to know, um, typically because in, in these kinds of situations that we've seen, there has been some sort of acting out or some sort of sign prior to an incident such as this. I mean, and I know maybe at the age that you were, you may not have seen it, but has there since that time been any conversation of maybe somebody knowing something was going on? And and I know a little bit, we talked a bit offline that you were saying your mom had kind of shared this with people. So we want to talk about that when we come back, kind of some of the things that could have been precursors or that could have led up to this particular thing. But um, we're going to come right back, y'all. And when we come back, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the things that we saw before, things that may have happened prior to this. But we're going to dive down into that and then we're going to open up the phone lines. Is that all right with you, Ms. Sherry? Yes, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. We'll be right back, y'all. Don't go nowhere. Keep that locked Keep the dial lock right there. I done lost my train of thoughts and my words, but we'll be right back, y'all. All right, y'all. I know y'all are listening in attentively and y'all have questions, comments. Please feel free to drop them on the screen. We want to share them. We want to answer your questions. We want to know what you're thinking. You're listening in. You're hearing this story. Um, Share your comments, share your questions, talk to us. We'll be right back, y'all. Don't go anywhere. We're going to drop some commercials over here, but we want to know from you what you're thinking, what you're hearing, what is your questions, what is your concerns. Let's talk about it. Let's open it up. All right, y'all. Hey, it's your girl, Yielded. I might be in the streets. I might be in the church. I might be anywhere, but we know that you can find me on Raise the Praise 100 every Tuesday, 4 to 7 p.m. with fire. You can also catch me on Sunday mornings, 10 to 1 with To the Glory of God. You never know what's going to go on on those shows, but we definitely know that the spirit of the living God will be amongst us on those shows. Catch your girl Yielded on Instagram at I Be Yielded. Catch me on Facebook at Yielded Media. Look for me on our upcoming Tube TV where we're going to be broadcasting all of our uh, in-station uh, interviews and even a few that we've captured on the street. It's your girl Yielded. Don't miss it. Don't miss this movement because the hand of God is on it. I be yielded. I'm out. Listen, if we even think you owe us money, you won't know what hit you. We'll put liens on everything you own. Raid your bank accounts, retirement fund, pension. You'll open up your paycheck and cry because we'll already have the money. We'll haul you into federal court and you might even go to jail. Hey, it's our job. Don't fight the IRS alone. The tax doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. Our experts will fight for you using IRS guidelines to stop any IRS actions like bank levies or wage garnishments. Plus, eliminate penalties and interest and reduce your past tax bill so you pay the IRS less. 
Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a tax doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. I'd have my mom call the number on the screen. You, you come see me alone. We'll work it out. Really, we will. <laughs> Break, hey y'all welcome back what's going on yes listen we over here talking don't worry about what we t listen if we even think you owe us money you won't know what hit you we'll put liens on everything you own raid your bank accounts retirement fund pension you'll open up your paycheck and cry because we'll already have the money we'll haul you into federal court and you might even go to jail hey it's our job don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. Our experts will fight for you using IRS guidelines to stop any IRS actions like bank levies or wage garnishments. Plus, eliminate penalties and interest and reduce your past tax bill so you pay the IRS less. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a tax doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. I'd have my mom call the number on the screen. You, you come see me alone. We'll work it out. Really. Sunday, April 14th, Houston would never be the same. It's the Gigantic Gospel Concert 2024, and it's one gigantic lineup featuring Pastor John P. Key, Never shall forget. Kalanze Gibbons. This ain't no ordinary world. Also, Doc McKenzie had the highlight. The Ken Spiritual. Lisa Noel Smith had the Brown Singers. The Cardi Cortez. Luther Barnes at the Sunset Jubilee, the group Fire, and hosted by the country preacher, Carlos Daniels, it's Pastor John P. Key, Talante Gibbons, Zaccardi Cortez, and more. Sunday, April 14th, at the Fountain of Praise in Houston. Get your tickets now at TicketWeb.com or Eventbrite.com. What's up, what's up? It's your boy, Cousin Al. Listen, man, the Saved and Silly Cruise is going down October 31st. We are leaving out of Galveston, that big G. And we're going to Cazumel. Hey, como esta? Hey, me estoy muriendo como un perro abandonado. We're going out there, man. I don't even know what I just said, but all I know is I'm learning my Spanish little by little. Uh, buenos dias, uh, buenas tardes, and, um, uh, que paso, uh, bien. No, being we finna be in Cozumel. That's what I want y'all to know. So go ahead, book your cabin with LD Entertainment so you can get into all the exclusive events. I just added an event, y'all. I just added an event. I just added an event, and they might they might get mad at me. They might like you know, I might get fined for this. But hey, you know, I'm gonna just take the charge. But I'm challenging every comedian on the boat, every comedian to a versus. I'm challenging y'all to a versus. Like, what's up? Like, and I ain't talking about no jokes. I'm talking about a wet t-shirt contest. Cause I mean, you think you could beat me at a wet t-shirt contest? So yeah, I'm. I, I might as well just keep on eating so I can win. Cause I mean, I just don't see. I ain't no using me stop eating now. Cause on the boat, I'm finna be eating burgers and and fries and and chicken and squirrel and all kind of stuff they go have on there. But anyway, go ahead and book your cabin. While it's cheap, LD Entertainment, the number is somewhere around here. And uh, why do I keep pointing like it's actually right here? It should be right here in front, down, down here. I don't know. I don't know. Book it. Four nine one, And the number went away on the screen, y'all. I done lost the whole thing. How did that happen? It just dropped off of there. Whatever happened with that? I don't know. Uh, but anyways, if you're interested in getting in on that cruise, go over to Gospel Comedy Entertainment on all social media platforms. Find the flyer that has the big boat on there and get yourself the book for the Saved and Silly Cruise. We're leaving out of Galveston in October. So, um, y'all, if y'all just tuning in, it is already 5.09. Y'all missed the hour and nine minutes of the show where y'all been listen welcome back into our into our virtual space and into the studio with us miss cheryl freeman y'all listen miss cheryl 
you were telling um, a little bit of your story, uh, uh, this true story of this book that you have written, No Ordinary Sunday. And if y'all just tuning in, we're talking about mental illness, mental health, mental awareness. And Miss Cheryl was sharing with us um, all of the insight of what was going on, what happened in her home uh, one particular Sunday after church. And uh, you said to us, Miss Cheryl, uh, that when you got to the neighbor's house, um, someone came out and said that your mom had taken your brother's life. Um, and prior to, you know, it's going to commercial break. I asked the question if there, and again, you were six, yes. six years old. I, I asked if there had been any other behavior or any other events that could have um, given out some warnings that something was going on with your mom. Just talk a little bit about um, just life every day. And even if there were some signs or symptoms that, that something was going on with your mother. Okay. So I, I do want to say that for the most part, my mom, she was a good mother. My mother, she took care of us. She bathed us. She fed us. She made sure that we had what we needed. She was our primary caregiver. Um, being so young, we were a handful for for my mom. I know just because we were so young, because my dad worked outside the home so much. And so she had a lot on her. A mother myself today, I can understand the pressure. In no way does that uh, justify or condone anything that happened. But again, my mother, she did take care of us. You asked a golden question, were there signs? Yes, there were signs. And I do remember a lot of those moments. I will share with everyone that my mother was actually committed uh, for about two years into a mental health facility prior to the tragedy. So she had actually been sent away. My grandmother was the one who stepped in and went over my dad's head and had my, my mother committed because my dad didn't want to do so. Again, she stayed in the mental institution for two years. She was home for a year and a half when the tragedy took place. And there were signs, there were things that happened, there were outbursts of anger, there was very erratic behavior. There were moments when my dad had to call in his parents to try to help control my mom, try to calm her down. There were times when my mother threatened my grandparents, uh, threatened their life, lives. And so there were absolute signs. I do believe that my dad, because we were so young and because he had already lived through having my mom away and then he having to take care of myself and my brothers, I, I just believe my dad was hopeful that my mother was okay. There, that no, no one had a clue that my mom would do what she did, no one. And that's something that my dad had to live with for the rest of his life. My mother did confide in close friends, what she was planning on doing. We're not quite sure why they didn't say anything. I do know that back in the, in the 70s, the early 70s, uh, oftentimes the way we dealt with mental health issues and, and uh, illnesses, was kind of, we swept it under the rug. We didn't take it as seriously as we should have. And um, perhaps, sir, and this is something that uh, I've talked to about with uh, other professionals that, it, I mean, it could have been that they, the friends either didn't know how to get my mother help, they didn't know where to go, or it could have also been that they just did not believe that a mother would do such a thing and they, could have thought, well, my mother is probably just, she's just having a bad day. She's having a bad wow. moment. Wow. And we've heard that. And that's all the more reason why we have to take those types of threats serious. Definitely. We have a comment here that says, uh, while being a mother is a blessing, the overwhelming task of motherhood can trigger mental health illness. Um, it's something so real, and I'm glad that Cheryl is speaking on it. We shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. The stigma is really in the African-American community. We're definitely going to delve down into that. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Petty, for that comment. We're going to delve down into that stigma in just a moment. Now, Cheryl, you were um, at, the, at the point that uh, the neighbor had announced 
that your your mother had taken the life of your brother. Yes. Um, do you want to continue from that point or do you? Sure. Want, okay, awesome. Yes. And so I was actually standing at the edge of the driveway with my neighbor who had grabbed me from the door in the garage and my neighbor, she, she just cried and I was very confused. I was crying myself. I wanted my mom. When I heard the, ne the next door neighbor run out into the street and she just made this huge announcement, oh my gosh, she has killed her baby. Wow. She killed her baby. To see the people running to our home with that announcement now having been released, to see my neighbors crying because even at that point, I simply wasn't convinced that my mom had did what she was being accused of doing. Why would a mother kill her children? Why would a mother not show that, that same love that we were just used to? Why, what happened? And so that was a very confusing moment for me. And I just didn't believe it. And then uh, many people gathered and they began all pretty much saying the same thing and saying some very harsh things about my mom. And then the reality kind of began to set in a little bit. I, so, so Cheryl, real quick. Yes. Was And I know you said there were some things and your mom had even been in, in a facility prior to. Was your mother ever abusive toward you all, ever mistreated you in any kind of way? And I know you said she took care of y'all and she did those things that were necessary. But were there any instances where you were abused or whipped or, you know, I know you said she yelled and things of that nature. But anything beyond that? So I will share, and this is in my book. I'm very, I'm an open book. <laughs> I will share this, and I do mention this in my story, and that is that our mom, she did from time to time spank us with extension cords. To me, that's abusive because mm -hmm. I would never spank my own children with the extension cords. And thankfully, those times were few and far in between. There were times also when. Uh, we were neglected. I do know my mother would look forward to attending this particular convention downtown. Oftentimes when that convention came into town, the care that we received from our mom was um, very much on the back end. We weren't really a priority then. I can remember this one particular time when she locked us in the house. And again, we were very young. She locked us in the house with our dog and we hadn't had anything to eat. And my oldest brother, George Anthony, he actually started going around looking in ashtrays for wooden matches that had been burnt, that had been lit. Uh, my dad was a smoker, and so we had ashtrays all throughout our home. And one, and one particular evening when our mom had locked us in the house and we were all very hungry, my younger brother and I noticed our older brother actually eating the heads of the matches. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And we began doing likewise. Wow. So in, in these these situations like this, did y'all ever talk to anyone and tell them, hey, we were locked inside, we didn't have food? Why why was that something you think as a, as a looking back now, did you not share that? So looking back, well, I can tell you in the moment, because that is something that we were simply used to, it looked normal to us. Wow. We, we did not stay with other people. And so the only, the only thing that we had to go on is what our life looked like from day to day. And I did share that with my dad many, many years later. And my, my dad just teared up. Uh, for us, it was just, okay, well, so the convention is in town. Mom is gonna lock us in the house. That was our norm. And if you don't have a different picture that shows something different. You don't know that it's wrong. You don't know that it's wrong. Wow. You don't yeah. know that there's something wrong with this situation. You don't know that that's not something that uh, a mom should necessarily do. And, and again, we followed suit to my older brother. And when my mom came back from the convention, everything was good again. So that's just how we lived. Wow. Listen, Cheryl, I know that there's more in this book. There's more you're going to share with us. But what we want to do at this time is we want to open up the phone lines. Um, we want to open up the lines for those of you that are listening in um, that have a question. For those of you that have read the book, for those of you that want to share um, something with Cheryl or even 
particular, you know, possibly ask a question. The phone lines are now open 346-355-0100. Again, that number is 346-355-0100. You can call in and ask your question. You can call in and share um, any Thing that you've read, if you've read the book, if you have a review of the book, if you think we should read the book, if you think she should give a sequel to the book, whatever, 346-355-0100. So we're going to continue right, right where we are at this point. You're, you're, you're a kid, the person that has been taking care of you all of your life, and you felt like everything that was going on in your life was normal. People are saying that she did something horrible um, to your brother. You, you saw your brother. You saw him on the floor. Now, You've not mentioned the younger brother. We got to call her. Hold that thought right okay. there. Raise the praise 100. You're live on the air. Hi. And I just want to comment uh, on the story itself. I've read the book. Even though you've heard as much as you've heard. You might want to grab that book, make sure you have a lot of tissue with you because I know the person now and I know all those three children that have to have gone through what that young lady has gone through in her family. It's a blessing to know that God is always in control. And I thank y'all for spreading that story because I know there are so many of us that are living the same way with the same issue, not realizing that problems are occurring that we could put a stop to. So I just want to say thank you, Cheryl, for coming on. I want to thank you for having Cheryl on your program also, because that book is a, is a true story of what's happening as far as mental illness is in families. And my family was a big family, and we had some aunts that were in the same predicament, and we didn't know that that's what was going on. Thank you so much for having that on. Uh, no, thank, you. thank you so much for calling in. And definitely, um, we appreciate you for listening in and sharing your review of the book. Y'all heard it right here. Thank you again for calling. Um, you heard it right here. Individuals that have read the book that already know the story. And even with as much as we shared, like she said, um, there's still more to the story. There's still more that we haven't even discussed. So you're a child. You're going through all of these things. Um, you're hearing this. You saw your brother. Where is your little brother, your younger brother? So my younger brother, I, I initially, of course, left him in the backyard when the neighbor and I were standing at the edge of the driveway, I began to scan the droves of people looking for my baby brother. And I saw him, someone had gotten him from the backyard. He was, he was too little to actually climb the fence, but someone had gotten my baby brother. And as soon as I saw my baby brother, I grabbed my neighbor's hand and I told, I said, there's my brother. We have to go get him. And we went and we got my baby brother so that he could be there with me. And my brother, my baby brother and I, we cried. Um, Amen. We cried because we just did not know what was going on. We did not understand why all these people here. Why? Why? Most importantly, why? Why is George in the house? So my baby brother hadn't seen what I'd seen, um, and. And I think I was just so overwhelmed with, again, the conversation that people were saying and uh, were having, the conversation that people were having and all of the, the derogatory terms that they were calling our mother. And while I it started sinking in, I still didn't want to believe it. Wow. wow. Hang tight there. We got another caller here. Praise the praise 100. You're live on the air. Hello. All right. They wanted to talk to us, but they didn't want to talk to us on the radio. All right. That's okay. Uh -huh. But yes, call if you're there and you want to call us back, please feel free. For those of you that are listening in on the app, on the on the website, if you're here in the virtual space and do like you'd like to ask a question, you have a comment, please call us 346-355-0100. Again, that number is 346-355-0100. All right, caller, you are live on the air. Hello, caller, you there? Hello, caller, are you there? Hello, caller, are you there? 
All right, they're live on the air. They don't want to talk to us, y'all. All right, all right. So listen, if you have a comment, question, you want to know something additional, please call us 346-355-0100. But if you call us, you got to talk to us, man. You can't just hold the phone. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Call us, talk to us. Uh, so you're there. You're hearing all of the things that people are saying about your mom. Your brother is is lying there. And I mean, you know, your, your kids, six and, and, and five, right? Yes. You, you, you may understand somebody being dead. You may not understand you're there. This mix of emotions is going on. What happens? How how do, how do you leave from there? What, what what you know without giving too much of the book? Because I think you've already given us a lot, right? Y'all got to pick up the book. Yeah, that's got, just chapter two. <laughs> oh, that's just chapter two. Mighty God, listen. Seventeen chapters. She's in chapter two. Okay, so there's a lot there. Yes. Um, so. Let's jump. Um, I don't know what chapter it is, but in Daddy's arms. Yes. T t take me to in Daddy's arms. Okay, so that's that's my third chapter. That's so chapter. Oh, saying, look at that! I didn't go too far. Okay, come yes. on. So I will say I want to address what what you said. Yes. Uh, we were so young, and we did not know, I guess, the finality of of death. We had never seen anyone die before. We had never been around uh, any any you know anyone who had lost their life. We'd never gone to a funeral. I was six. I knew something was wrong with my brother, but I will tell you that even up until the point where everyone was making these remarks about my mom, I did not believe that my brother was dead. I still, I still thought we could help him. Somebody needs to go and help George Anthony. That's why I was pleading with my neighbor. Please let me talk to my mama because I wanted to tell my mother what I'd seen. I still, again, didn't believe that my mother had, had done what people were accusing her of doing. The police uh, came, the paramedics came, and they, of course, put my mother in the police car. And we were still standing there with my neighbor and police officers walked over to us and they began to talk. So they had tried to contact my dad. My dad worked at Armco Steel. It was a huge steel factory. Back in the 70s, we did not have cell phones. And so it took them a while to locate my dad. The police officers walked over. And my, my neighbor was very protective of, my, of me and my brother. And the police officers, after asking her permission to speak with us, they knelt down to me and they asked me if I could go next door across the street, if I could go across the street and tell them who the little boy on the floor was. They wanted to remove my brother from the house because the crowd of people had become, well, let's say that, that the atmosphere was so tense and they thought people were getting ready to tear up the neighborhood. Oh, wow. That had never happened in our neighborhood. And because of the tension, because of uh, just, again, the the way people were feeling and, and the, the things that they were saying and doing, they wanted to remove my brother from the house. Just imagine you have all these people outside and inside is a baby. He's nine years old. He's on the floor and his mom has taken his life. No one knew how to deal with that. I agreed with the, I agreed to do what they asked me to do. And so uh, they escorted me and my neighbor and my baby brother across the street to our home. And they told me, I'm, we're just going to, uncover his face. And uh, if you know who the little boy is, let us know who he is. Well, I already knew that was my brother because I'd already seen him on the floor. Right. Once we entered the home, the police had to move our neighbors and strangers out of the way because there were just so many people everywhere. Once we got into the home, into our home, there were police everywhere. They were turning all kinds of stuff upside down. They were in our kitchen. I mean, they were just, I guess, looking for clues as to why my mom did what she did. We were escorted to the back of the room where George Anthony was. And of course we walked in there and they did have my brother covered. I walked over with the officer. They uncovered my brother's face and identified my brother as George Anthony. And they covered his face back up and then they escorted us back out. Not too long after then, my dad arrived and they told my dad what they had done. They asked me to go and identify my brother, my dad. He hit the ceiling. Yes. I mean, it was just I, I it was more than enough to have the woman that he had married 
when he who when he had children with to have that woman the mother of his children take the life of one of their children that was that was traumatic enough but then to have his other two children actually in the room with his now deceased son and to have one of his children actually identify yes. see the, the yes. his son's face yeah it, it was not it, it was not a good thing yes for them to have asked but again back in the 1970s we just didn't know back then what we know today regarding right, tragedy right. regarding was, yeah. trauma there wasn't all these laws and requirements and things exactly so cheryl i'm gonna pause you right there we're gonna yes. take a brief break okay but i know the the title or the chapter entitled in daddy's arms yes i definitely want to take a look into that when we okay. come back in and and, and, and get into that I, I mean there's a mix of emotions just me sitting here um so a father again a husband having been gone away and even knowing some of the things that he knew prior to um, this tragic event on this no ordinary Sunday. Yes. I, I know there was a mix of, of emotions. And so what we're going to do is take a brief break. We're going to come back and we're going to dig down into in daddy's arms. And then we're going to warp speed to, to the growing pains and to, yeah, just some other parts of the book, because we want to get a little more insight into how you sit where you sit, looking like you look. And she's already pointing toward the heavens, y'all. It's by the grace of God. But we'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. Keep it locked right there. For those of you in the virtual space, um, we want you to um, continue to type your comments and questions. And we're going to get there. Uh, Miss Petty, I see you over there. We're going we gonna to get to that. We're going to get You're rushing us. You're rushing us. Hold on, sis. We're getting there. But y'all, keep it locked right here. We'll be right back. All right? Or someone you love struggling with an addiction to drugs or alcohol and want to be set free from the chains of addiction? Then call Addiction Helpline America right now to get the help you need. From drug and alcohol addiction to dual diagnosis treatment, we provide a confidential helpline to help people like you get sober and live happy, substance-free lives.
Which ones you want? And I'm gonna let you go. I want traditional you know, movies of the year, traditional album of the year, and also praise and worship song of the year. Awesome. Listen, praise and worship song of the year. And look, I'm gonna give him a five show runners award because he hit them runs and make me feel like I feel it all in my shot. Nah, 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 nah. Was that a run or just extra? That was like a tone, like speaking tone. See, I, I don't know my ministry, so I'm just stay right here. On the fire, on the fire show, putting my heat to the word in Houston streets. We in Vegas, it's hot as Hades, and so I'm gonna let my man go and get out here and do what he gotta do. Oh, what? What is that? Listen, that's the wrong church. This, that's the cousin Peter coming out of him, y'all. He was about to give it to y'all, so we gonna get him out of here before we get in some trouble. He done got the three awards. We don't want him to. I'm gonna take him if they try to take him back. So we, ain't, they ours. They going to Houston. They ain't getting back. No. Not at all. God bless you, Zakari Cortez, y'all. Houston Zone. Keeping yourself level. Mm. Um, that would be the struggle, keeping myself level. You know, fighting this fight on a day to day basis, you know, but we're still here. Awesome. Thank God. Yeah. Awesome. Listen, you got to keep your head straight, is what I hear one of the guys saying. That's so, it. What can we expect coming up from you, like, from, you know, in the future? What you got? We have some new music coming, uh, a book possibly, you know, maybe a little book. You know, but definitely some young people are going away and everything, you know, so just keep us lifted and we're going to... Awesome. So stay tuned. That's it. Y'all y'all heard it. Stay tuned. Some stuff coming up. Inspiring, uh, aspiring artists coming up. What's one word that you give them as advice? Remember the yes inside of you will be the yes for somebody else. Listen, y'all heard it right here. Leandria Johnson. This your girl yielded with Raise the Price 100 Houston. We keep it locked. We know what we do. Praise God all day, every day. We'll see y'all in a minute. Keep it locked. We'll be back. <laughs> Are you or someone you love struggling with an addiction to drugs or alcohol and want to be set free from the chains of addiction? Then call Addiction Helpline America right now to get the help you need. From drug and alcohol addiction to dual diagnosis treatment, we provide a confidential helpline to help people like you get sober and live happy, substance-free lives. With one call, you can be on the phone with addiction specialists across the country who will guide you on the next steps to find the freedom and healing you desperately need. Call Addiction Helpline America at the number below. We provide a confidential helpline to help people like you get sober and live happy, substance-free lives. One phone call today can change your life forever. Don't wait another minute for that right moment to be set free. Take that bold step and call Addiction Helpline America at the number below or visit www.addictionhelplineamerica.com. Call 877-314-1645. Hey y'all, what's going on? Go ahead and like and share this video for me. We appreciate all of the participation, all of the comments. We appreciate all of it. Um, we're going to get to some of those comments there. We're also going to open the phone lines back up for you to call in and to share with us. So don't, don't go nowhere. Like and share. Um, we want people everywhere to know about this stigma that we're getting ready to delve down into. We're going to talk about the stigma of mental health, mental illness, and we're going to, hey, we're going to talk about all that. So definitely, definitely share this video. Like and share, like and share. All right. Oh. 
I don't have your drop. You didn't send me your drop. Yeah, for you that's listening. Send me your drop. You hear that? That could be you on here on the radio. Send me a drop says I am yielded, rocking with yielded on five. Say your name though. From Houston, Texas. Send it to me. Yieldedmedia at gmail.com. I'm gonna play your drop. Let me let y'all see us on the We ain't got time. Do I got time? I got time. Hold on. Hey guys, Janice Harris here from Houston, Texas. H-Town, rockin' with you then on the Fire Show. Doing what we do every Tuesday about this time, 4 to 7 p.m. We put a little heat to the word on the street. Hey, so keep it locked right here every Tuesday. Join us for all kinds of stuff, hot blazing topics, dedicated news, man, and, you know, just a little bit of humor, a little bit of laughter because we are saved and silly. So if you're just now tuning in, shame on you. We've been here since the 4 o'clock hour. It's now 540. It's almost time for the I don't likes. I know y'all live for that. But in the meantime and in between time, share with your friend. Let them know where we are. Download the app. Put it on your phone. Take us wherever you go. Again, it's your girl Yielded here on the Fire Show. Welcome back, y'all. Just before we went to the commercial break, it was a little bit of God Blocked It by Kurt Carr and a little bit of information we have in our studio here with us today, Miss Cheryl. Miss Cheryl, you all right? I'm I'm good. I'm blessed. Listen, y'all, we had a little brief party while y'all was gone. I'm going to tell y'all what we did and what we went, but don't worry about it. We was gone for a few minutes, and now we are back. Um, if you're just tuning in, we've been talking about mental health, mental illness. Um, Cheryl has been sharing a little bit of her story. Uh, she got the whole story, maybe a great majority. I ain't going to say the whole story. In 350-some-odd books here, No Ordinary Sunday. We're going to put all that information for you on the screen. We'll have all of that where you can purchase the book and all of that good stuff. But somebody found a good segment to call in on. So we're going to check them out. Raise the praise 100. You're live on the air. Hi, this is Mo, and I just want to call in and give my review on uh, No Ordinary Sunday. Awesome. Go right I, ahead. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it gave me hope. You know, it, I cried at the beginning and I, of sadness, and then I cried at the end of joy. And it just basically told me that, you know, don't give up on God because he never gives up on us, you know. And I, I, I do recommend it. <laughs> I recommend anyone going through anything that's losing hope to go ahead and, and, and read No Water Every Sunday. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Y'all heard it right there. The book gave her hope. You never know what's going on in an individual's life life at the time that they do anything, whether it's hear a song, read a book, um, hear a prayer, watch a sermon, read a sermon, anything like that. You never know what's going on, but it is always, uh, it's always our hope um, to, to help someone. And so Cheryl, we're going to, before we go, uh, before we went to the commercial break, I asked you about the chapter in daddy's arms. Your dad, this incident has happened. Your, your, your mom has been taken away. Um, you and your baby brother are there. They've made you endure the hardship of, in, um, identifying your brother's remains there. Your dad comes in, he's got this mix. Oh, somebody wants us. Hold on. Raise the praise 100. You're live on the air. Hello. Hello, hello. You're live on the air. Oh, hi. My name is Carla Richardson, and I wanted to call in and just let all your listeners know that, um, you know, many of us read a lot of books, uh, different genres, but, but this book is really special because you know, Cheryl is able to take us through, you know, every aspect of 
not only the tragedy, but the growth and the faith and the trust in God. And that's the beauty of the book, that it's not just a good read. It is a good revelation of how good God is. Wow. And no matter the circumstances. And so if you haven't read the book, uh, read it not to um, affirm anything about what you already know about God, but certainly just to to reinvigorate that fervor that we have to have in faith. Because sometimes things around us just aren't going how we even understand. You know, she talked about not understanding as a child. Well, as adults, we don't understand everything. But if we trust and rely on him, you know, we'll be okay. And that that's the beauty of the book. So I just wanted to, to chime in and, and let you guys know that the book um, is, it is just, Cheryl just takes us through every aspect and you're, you're with her. Uh, she's a really good writer. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, get, get the book and read it just to really her letting us in on this. It's a very personal um, story and she's so transparent and sharing with us and I appreciate that. Awesome. Awesome. That's amazing. Thank you so much for calling in and thank you for listening in. And we hope you'll continue to listen. I will. Awesome. Thank My you. so. Time. Awesome. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Listen, y'all, y'all are hearing firsthand reviews here. I don't know how much Cheryl paid them to call and <laughs> say that. Y'all know I'm silly. I, I, I definitely hear the passion in what is being shared Uh here uh, with, with the individuals. We're going to share all the information for the book uh, where you can get the book. I have a picture of the book, so I don't need to hold the book up, Miss Janice. Hold on. So um, we're definitely wanting to hear just a little bit about uh, In Dad's Arms, and then we're going to get over to uh, the next part that I want to make sure that we talk about, uh, you know, the growing pains and 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 getting into, you know, where is God? So definitely share share just a little bit about in dad's God's in, in dad's arms. Wait a minute now. You, you heard that in dad's God's on. Come on. Listen. Yeah, that's OK, I, I, that's why you have to read all the way to. the. Come end. on. Come yes. on. Look at that. So yes. my, my mind had went into the prophetic there. That's it. Cheryl, share a little bit about In Dad's Arms, and then we're going to make sure that individuals know how, when, and where to get the book. Okay. So In Dad's Arms, that's my third chapter, and the latter part of that chapter talks about the latter part of that evening, what that evening looked like after all of the people had left, after the coroner had left with George's body, after, of course, the police had left and mom was downtown now in uh, the jail and uh, talks about how our family, our immediate family was there. And for the first time, it was somewhat quiet uh, after the after, aftermath of what had taken place that afternoon. My brother and I, we were so very frightened and our dad was all we wanted. My dad, and I'll speak even more personally about myself, my dad was just all I wanted. And I, I, I would like to read this. This is from um, the very last page of chapter three. And uh, at the very top, it says, as hard as it was to fight sleep, I was too afraid to go to bed without daddy. And then I talk about as soon as daddy lay down in the bed between me and Chris, I fell fast asleep. My eyes were so heavy and I couldn't keep them open any longer. Unfortunately, though, my sleep was short lived from having a terrible nightmare about George and waking up crying. I jumped down. Grandmother began praying for me as she lay her hands on my forehead for the nightmares to stop. Daddy then held me in his arms and rocked me back to sleep. He quietly thanked her and granddad as they returned to their rooms. Our grandparents had come into the room upon hearing me crying and screaming. Daddy moved me closer to him and held me tightly in his arms. His presence was my protection. In my daddy's arms was the safest place for me to be. Sunday, August 26, 1973 ended very differently than the way it began. Our brother George was dead and our mother had been taken away, accused of killing him. Wow. 
this ha this this is a lot to to hear to take in um so i know it has to be a lot to to share it and to tell it over and over and over and you tell it with such passion and such because it's your life it's your story um and and i mean i i still you know see there's some emotion in it. I see that there is some some points that you kind of have to grasp and and and, and get you re, you know gain your composure. But as you started off at the beginning, you you started at the back of the book and you talked about the healing. Yes. You talked about you're in a healed place, um, and in this is how many years later? Um, honestly, this is. Almost 51 years later. Almost 51 years later. Yes. You you sit here. Had, you know, had I not had a little synopsis of the book prior to, I wouldn't have known any of your story. Had I not, I mean, you know, just, okay, no ordinary Sunday based on a true story, tragedy. I would have never looked at you and thought that this was your childhood. I would have never looked at you and thought that you witnessed something so traumatic. Um, there's a, 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 a chapter in the book entitled Growing Pains. Real briefly, because I don't want, I don't want, I'm one of them, I don't want you to spoil nothing for me. <laughs> don't post on social media what's in the book. Don't post the movie and how it's going to end. I don't want a spoiler, but I want to know the growing pains. Yes. Okay, so I. Brief, I, don't give them too much, Cheryl. Okay, I, will I, give I, I got much. to sell this book now. I, I will not give them I, too I'm much. I'm going to sell the book in a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I will say growing pains represented probably the most normal part of my life at that point. So we arrived at a place where we began living with our grandparents, our dad's parents, and they began taking care of us. They were responsible for continuing to raise us. Our dad was very much a full-time father while he still worked full-time. Every moment he had uh, where he had a stretch of time to make the spend with us, my dad did that. But he really entrusted our grandparents to oversee and make sure that we were receiving everything that we needed to receive. So growing pain talks about my being tall and lanky. I looked like a boy. I was called a boy so many times. Mm -hmm. I went through so many very awkward stages and phases of life, all just a part of growing up. Many of us have gone through those times where, you know, we just didn't feel the prettiest and uh, we didn't feel like we were the most popular or the ones who were really, uh, you know, wanted um, by others to be friends, chosen by others to be on the soccer team or the basketball team. We, we were kind of like the last ones to be chosen. And so growing pains for me represents that time of life. But it was such a very, very crucial, very central time of growth for me because through my growing pains, I began to go into the woman I am today. I say that because my grandmother, through a lot of those awkward moments, my grandmother was there uh, when when I had my first crush, and he was not crushing on me. Oh my! <laughs> yes, and my grandmother reminded me who I was in the third grade. That was very important for later on um, when I was approached by someone who was trying to force themselves on me and I had to stand up and fight my fight for myself. That was very important because later on in my life, I absolutely had to fight. I felt like I was in a fight of my life for my sanity, um, even for my brother taking care of him. It's later on in the book, you all. Um, you but my book. Yes. <laughs> but growing pains represents all of that. And growing pains also uh, just talks about the love that our grandparents just poured out on us. The way my grandmother taught me about cleanliness being uh, close and next to godliness and yes. uh, how our grandparents taught us a continuation of what our dad and mom at that point had taught us to be respectful. Yes, ma'am and no ma'am. Yes, sir and no, sir. To say thank you. One of the greatest lessons I've learned in life, and I have passed this on to my girls, is the lesson of gratitude. Oh, man. Come when on. you are grateful mm -hmm. Talk for you. what you've been given, when you are grateful for the good things that people have done for you and are doing for you, you know how you reciprocate and you know how you show people that you're grateful for that? 
you grow into a decent human being. Wow. You learn to love others. You learn to help others. Uh, you also learn to be kind. You learn to be respectful. You learn to not be judgmental. One of the greatest lessons also that my grandparents taught us was that life didn't owe us anything because of what our mother did. So we didn't get get out of jail cards, if you will. We didn't get special treatment or privilege because of what happened in our family. That's not how I was raised. I was raised to, you go to school, you make the grades, you do your work, you do what you're supposed to do. You don't get any type of leniency because of what your mother did. They were very loving, but I appreciate those moments when they had to be firm. That's part of my growing pains. When I got in trouble for talking too much at school, being disrespectful, that right. was part of my growing pains. Wow. All of that helped, again, groom and make me and, and help me and form me. And I know God's hand was involved in all of that, all these little lessons that I share in my book. God molded and shaped me to be the woman that I am today. Those growing pains are so very necessary. Do they hurt? Yes, that's why they call growing pains. But are they very beneficial? Yes, because at some point, the pain doesn't hurt anymore because you've grown beyond it. Wow. So Cheryl, I, I know everybody is hanging on the cliff here, but we don't want to share too much more of this book because we want you to pick this book up and we want you to purchase this book. We want you to read this book. Um, it is a testimony. It is a helper. Um, as somebody else said, a revelation. Um, basically giving you hope is what somebody else said. So we, we, we want you to get this book and we want you to get it in your hand, not necessarily for the monetary gain but for the gain of insight, the gain of knowledge. Listen, I read in my Bible, it says that people are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And it just so happens that Cheryl's word of testimony is in this book. So Cheryl. Yes. Yeah, I do this on the show every now and then. It's like speed questions. Yes. And just one word answer. Sure. So your mom was taken away and you never saw her again. Correct? Incorrect. That's incorrect. Yes. Mom came home and you didn't have a relationship with mom. Yes or no? No, that's incorrect. So, y'all, this mm -hmm. is in the book. Y'all, you want to know these things in the book. You want answers to these questions. You got to pick up the book. Now, I want to go back to a question that was dropped a little bit earlier. Um, I, I read it, but I didn't want to share it at that point. But at some point, because I'm looking at you, and I've said this a couple of times, you, you said it already out of your mouth, but you don't look like any of this story. You don't look like this unusual Sunday. Somebody asked the question and they said, um, it was actually Nancy. She said, I've read the book and I've known Cheryl for over 20 years, yes. but I've never asked. How long did it take for you to forgive your mother? Because I know it's someone out there struggling with forgiveness. How do you get forgive someone for such an act don't answer just yet okay don't answer hold on okay i might make y'all read the book <laughs> did you put a time in the, in the book did you did you say 50 days 50 years what did you answer that num numerically in the book not numerically okay but, but you, okay. i did answer okay did she answer. did answer yes should, should did i answer. should i share it should i let her answer the question or should we get the book and you find out in the book Okay, I ain't gonna be that ugly. I'm, I'm gonna let her answer the question. But there's a chapter in 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 this book, and uh, I don't typically do this um, too often. But there's a chapter in the book, and it's actually entitled "Where Is God?" Cheryl, yes. I'm, you you ain't know that I'm 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 I'm, I'm a spoken word minister. I, I do spoken word, mm -hmm. and I actually have a piece that's called "Where Is God?" I might mm -hmm. share it later on in the show. I might share it, but yes. So my question to you, mm. it hinges on this question. Have you forgiven your mother? Yes, I have. She has forgiven her mother. I already knew the answer to the question. And not because she told me, but because I can look at her when she shares this story, when she shares her story, it's from a place of help for the next. Yes. It's not from a place of hurt from what she endured. So Cheryl, you've forgiven your mother. Yes. Um, 
and, and you may have said this and I, I, I've gotten so engulfed in the story. I got to go read the book. I, I got a trip this weekend. Um, I think I'm going to sit down and read this book. So don't worry about where I'm going to be. I'm going to be reading No Ordinary Sun. I ain't going to show it again yet, just yet, because Miss Janice is waiting on me to share it so she can order it before we get off of here. And I want you to, Miss Janice, but hold on. So, Cheryl, yes. you forgiving your mother. Yes. Is, is, your, is your father, is he still alive? He is not. He is, he, he, he is not still alive at this point. I have to know. We the people call it. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Raise the praise of one hundred. Hey, you live on there. Okay, listen, friend, friend. You got to turn us down at the house because we can hear it. Hey, friend, you there? Hey, you live on the air. Yes, how are you? Yeah, I'm wonderful. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. I, I just have a question for Miss Freeman. I, I, I'm listening and I admire your testimony. It's, it's a blessing and I just have a question I want to ask. Is that, is that okay, Yildiz? Yes, sir. That's fine. As a child, how has that affected you as a parent for us dealing with your children or with your kids when they were younger? Uh, always looking to see if, you know, they may have any issues or just, just how did you treat them or, or or just the way you brought them up? How, how, how did it affect you as a parent? Yeah, oh, that's yes, a please. great question. Can, and, can you call her? Can you hear her loud and clear? Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I just want to make sure you can hear. Go okay, ahead. that's a great question. Thank you so much for that. Are you my, my experiences as a child, the trauma that I endured through absolutely impacts still to this day my role as a mother. I would not say that I'm overprotective, but I will say that I'm very protective of my children. I will say that because of the experiences that I had with my mother, uh, I do make sure that if I see anything going on with myself, let me say that first of all, with myself, if I, if I see that, uh, you know, I need to go and talk to someone, if I'm wrestling with something, I'm such a huge proponent and advocate of therapy. I go and seek therapy. I have no shame in telling people therapy is one tool that God used to help heal me from the trauma. Uh, we can't overcome trauma and tragedy. It's a process, but there's hope for healing. That's one quote that I love to share with others. So with my girls, I'm very attentive. Uh, I think that what I endured through and went through as a child, it has raised my awareness mm. to the, uh, the presence and the uh, the presence of possible potential mental health issues, not even just in our family, but even when we're out and about, if we're at Walmart, you know, if we're just anywhere, um, anything can be going on where someone may not have control or they may be slipping. And it's very important for us to maybe to recognize that. Don't, don't don't play anything. It can happen anywhere, not only in our home, but just outside of our home. So yes, uh, the tragedy, the trauma, it has absolutely raised my awareness. I look at my girls, I talk to my girls, I have a very close relationship with all of my girls. I'm just, I'm so blessed, it's, especially I have my the three at home, um, and we talk a lot about different things that are going on in the world. We talk about things that are going on in their school. Some things may kind of raise my awareness to a point of, okay, do I need to step in? Do I need to say something? And if they say no, mom, I got it, then I'm making sure that I'm equipping my girls to pay attention yes. to what's going on Definitely. around them. Definitely. With friends, even, you know, whatever may be going on around. So, yes, it has absolutely, I do believe, made me a better parent awesome awesome yes thank awesome. you thank you Carla. Yeah. all right Carla. thank you so much we are pre appreciate you listening in and appreciate you being a part of the show today most definitely always I always chime in awesome thank you sir have a thank good you. afternoon I, I, bye, -bye. I, I,
All right, y'all too. Good evening. I don't know what time of the day it is. <laughs> Thank you. We love our callers. We love to know that others are listening in and engaging in on the conversation. And um, Cheryl, I want to definitely make sure that I apologize uh, to you. Um, it has nothing to do with the show, but the title that is um, hinged to this live is next week's show mm -hmm. so i offer my apologies to you because it, it if you see the title on there it looks so next week we're talking about um uh death in custody mm -hmm. and the show is entitled lynching by another name and so i want to say to my viewers to the listeners the followers that is not the title for this show um it it looks offensive even when I look at it. And so that is definitely not the title that was hinged for this show. Um, I had two lives set up and I went into the wrong one. So okay. I offer that apology to you publicly. Well, apology um, yeah, it was, it was an right. oversight in, in, and I don't want anyone to misconstrue the, the oversight and the accident that looks like I titled this show that. So I apologize publicly to each and every one of you apologize for rushing and, and getting excited and hitting the wrong button. So that's what that is. And the title of this show um, is the one that was on the flyer uh, about mental health and me mental illness. So just wanted to clear that up. Um, I publicly. appreciate that. Honey, life. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I and live so, a perfect life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of us do. Listen, I'm perfect when I'm sleep. So happy. It's over. It's over. It's over. So no, I I, I really wanted I to make sure that. that I clear that up because again, the title um, is attached to this live, and I'm gonna go and try to edit it once this live ends okay. because I don't like the way it looks. Right. Again, the title again is 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 for next week's show. But um, Thank yes, you. yes, ma'am. And so uh, y'all, that it's it's important for me because my my personality is kind of wonky. God made me like this, but I want to ensure that no offense. It's no taken. Offense, Nobody offense. looks at that and say, why would she title that? It was a it was a mistake. It was yes. a mistake. So um, back to the story. Yes, um, again, that was definitely a, a good question by a caller. How has it affected, you know, your your parenthood, your mothering and nurturing of your children? And um, I, I want to you already tapped in on it. And, and I said something about it earlier that there's a stigma. There's a stench, there's a, and I say a stench and an odor because we have this misnomer, this misconception that, and I want to say this, this particular race or cultures of people have decided that counseling therapy is not, we don't do that. We don't need that. And I, I want to tap in onto that stigma, uh, but I wanted to address uh, I want to answer the question because Miss Nancy asked like 23 hours ago and I want to know how long without giving too much of, of, of that forgiveness and how you dealt with that and got into that with your mom. I, I want you to give us maybe a numeric answer because we had 606 y'all. Y'all didn't talk. Yeah, Miss Sharon done talked the whole time y'all. She done. We done ran into I don't like but this is good. This is good information. So don't worry about that. I don't like I'm being silly. But Miss Sharon, I don't want to give too much more of the book away because I want I want y'all to read 350 some odd pages of this book because it's I need to start reading tonight. <laughs> um, I'm Miss Janice already said she's not a reader, but she's gonna buy the book. I keep putting it up here. I'm scared because she's gonna go order it and get off of here and ain't gonna listen to the rest of what we got. But how long did it just short numeric answer, or you know, not it may not even be a numeric answer, but you know, little time, long time. Respond to Miss 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 uh, Nancy because she been wanting to ask you. Twenty eight years. It took about twenty eight years. That was the beginning of my healing, and I started with forgiving my mother. Wow. Yes. Twenty eight years, and she said two key things: forgiveness and healing. So I want to say to you that are listening in on the app, on the website, in a virtual space here, that forgiveness at the end of the day is not for the individual. The forgiveness is for you. Cheryl just said her forgiveness was the beginning of her healing. Yeah. And so if you don't get anything else out of this on today, um, you forget about the mental illness. If you forget about how important it is to 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 be a good parent, how forget how to look for one, make sure that you get that forgiveness. Forgiveness. It's for you, the individual, not the person that you need to forgive, yes. not the person that offended you, not the person that made you feel or did whatever. It is for you. So, Cheryl, yeah. you're here today. 
Um, and I have a flyer over here that said you've been out in Webster at this church. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Dar. Hey, Miss Darius. <laughs> Shout out to Pastor Love out there at Happy Praise Love. Chapel. Yeah. Um, hot dog hallelujah is what he said. Um, <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> oh, my God. See, that's what happened when you talk about people behind their back. Then it come out and you get tickled. Pastor Love, I'm sorry I've been talking about you saying hot dog hallelujah. That is funny to me, and I love it. And, uh, yeah. But, uh, so... You're you're sharing your story. Um, you said you shared that y'all. This was uh, Sister Cheryl's first radio interview. Shout out, get, get, see, y'all don't know when to clap in this church. Y'all should be clapping for Sister Cheryl. This is her first radio interview, and she's sitting over there like a champ. And look, Miss Doris over here. We just got to talking about her and her past. I ain't even know you were still here, Miss Doris. Hey, Miss Doris. So you gotta be careful when you talk about people that show up. But um, this was her first radio interview, and I know and believe definitely definitely not the last um and i believe the 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 insight the testimony the revelation the blessing all of those good things that are compiled in these 350 some odd pages are going to hey shout out man listen are going to be an inspiration to other people um and sharing this book this message with people is, is, is going to reach the, the, the multitude. It's going to go big. It's going to go wild. It's going to go crazy. So, and I believe it's because it's God's work. Um, so I want to share yeah. this book um, with you. I'll shout out to uh, one of my radio colleagues, Mr. Anderson, Dalton Anderson, all the way in New York City. Man, listen, Dalton, you need to get you, you need to get Cheryl on your show out there. You, she I'm is. Sure she, I'll go. I'll, I'll, I will go. Listen, she didn't quote your scriptures. <laughs> it. Send me, I will go. That's what the word of God says. But I want to stick this book up here because I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to get this. I'm gonna stick this picture up here too. She was out at Praise Temple uh, at the Singles Ministry. My my testimony no ordinary sunday and she was a guest speaker out there y'all that that already happened on march the 9th and now she's here with us today and she's sharing a little bit of her story no ordinary sunday by cheryl battle freeman you can grab this book you can get this book as a matter of fact i beseech you brethren uh-huh and i ain't gonna say god said it i'm saying it get, grab this book get this book um and uh, listen, I'm dropping the website right there, noordinarysunday.com. Yes. You can grab this book from there. Are you on Amazon? I am on Amazon. I hope you order from my website. I will send you an autographed copy of my book. Y'all heard it right there. Go to noordinarysunday.com. No, you know. Ordinary, O R D I N A R Y, Sunday, S U N D A Y dot com. No ordinary Sunday dot com. Order your book there. Um, and I'm gonna say this I'm gonna drop this plug. Order from there because then um, Amazon can't get their part out of it <laughs> and she get all of the money for her book. How about that? Uh, go get go get it from no ordinary Sunday dot com. Grab the book, she's gonna send you an autographed copy. I already got mine. I, I already got my book. My book. I got my book last Tuesday, y'all. Let me tell y'all how this works. Let me take this down so the people can see my face. Hold on, because I got I got the book up there. This is the book. Y'all see the book? Okay, hold on. Let me get this off of here. Hold on. Y'all wait. Y'all slow down. So I already got my book right here. And look, let me show y'all my book inside here. Y'all y'all on the radio, y'all can't hear it. I mean, see it. Y'all can only hear it. But y'all hear the pages? That's 350 some odd pages, but my book is already autographed and uh, she left me a little note in there. God bless you and the five family for this glory, for his glory, Cheryl Battle Freeman. I already got my book here, y'all. So I'm saying that to say that if y'all want to start reading No Ordinary Sunday with Yielded, go ahead and go to NoOrdinarySunday.com. Pick up your book. This is a book that I know is going to be or continue to be a blessing to many people because, again, it's a story in here. Uh, Mr. Dalton, all the way in New York City, says to send your information. So um, you didn't, you, you didn't buy, got booked out in New York City to share your story and your testimony. And again, it is, Mr. Anderson, um, a testimony of a family growing up in a house or children growing up in the house with a mother that suffered from mental illness and one of the children lost their life life due to the mother at the hand of the mother and um cheryl is here mother had a plot and a plan to kill all of the children all three children and the husband 
Okay. And herself. And herself. Yes. And so this story, again, is a testimony. And Cheryl's still sitting here today, um, shows the grace of God and how merciful that he is. I, I And I know Cheryl shared a little bit about her mom telling other individuals about what she was going to do. Um, she had already done some things, poisoned the dad on his way to work, but the dad was able to come home and, and was able to live and to continue to take care of the children. Um, don't know what she had done or if she had did anything to Cheryl and her younger brother prior to this. But Cheryl, we want to tap in Oh, somebody, you better prophesy over here. Somebody say, here comes the movie. Hallelujah. I've had so many people. Thank you. Thank you. I've had so many people say that. Thank you for that. Let's pray. That, pray that's it. Uh, let's get yes. this out here. Share this video. Yes. Uh, listen, Mr. Anderson, don't purchase it from Amazon. Look right there, scrolling down there. He said he's on Amazon right there. There's a website, noordinarysunday.com. Purchase it from there. She's going to personally autograph it for you and it's going to come directly from her so that way amazon don't get none of her money <laughs> that's what i said we don't want amazon to get her money y'all know I'm, I'm i'm about the people this is entrepreneurship this is <laughs> artistry Amen. right here this is Amen. back from her website yes and there's the information there about also me my biography and if they want to know more about our stories there Awesome. Yes. So yes, somebody already said they won't can't wait to see the movie. Say it's mm -hmm. coming. I believe. Listen, I just Amen. want I just want to be an extra. Amen. Just let me be the one sitting on the corner and 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 or, or just let me come when the premiere comes out. That's all. I don't need to be in the movie. I just want I want to come eat some popcorn and watch the movie. Listen, and I'm gonna bring my own clinics. <laughs> so don't worry about it. But listen, this book is here, and one of the things that I know. Um, and believe is that we understand um, science. Uh, and I say that because you a whole, you got a whole degree in science and I'm a whole nurse out here in these streets and we understand science and we even understand um, the precursors and things of mental illness and mental uh, health. And a lot of times they say it's genetics and you're predisposed to it because of your genes. Um, but because I'm, Hey, let me be spiritual. But because I know God and I, we know those spirits do transfer, but because I know God and I know how merciful he is and I know that he can, will and does do anything that we need him to do. Yes. Cheryl, um, yes. I want to talk real briefly about. Um, you said that you yourself have sought out counseling and therapy and you do see a, a counselor, counselor, a therapist. Um, there's a misconception there's a misnomer there's a stigma as us as a people and i say us a lot of people but particularly our brown and black people feel that mental illness or even seeking counseling because back in the 70s when this was going on with your mom mental illness so to speak was not a, a thing it wasn't a diagnosis code it wasn't a something that they said they just you know something to matter and something happened and then there's that um but now we have all of these different categories and classes and diagnosis codes and um of of mental illness and i mean it's a barrage of them um but we feel like that don't happen to us. We feel like that um, is not what we do. Mm -hmm. So as someone who has endured this, as someone who lives this daily, how would you try to break that stigma or how would you speak to that stigma? Yes. I guess is what, go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll start by uh, this is something the Lord gave me when I was thinking about so what am I gonna share with the audience and and also um, a greater revelation for me regarding the work that God has carved out for me to do and He gave me this simply address the issue silence the stigma so typically what we do is we reverse that we will try to silence the issue. We won't talk about it. We'll brush it under the rug. We don't want to acknowledge it. Uh, we put it on the back burner. And instead, we bend or we are actually uh, addressing the stigma because we're bending to it. We're bending to uh, the thoughts and the those mindsets that, well, if you go and seek help, 
that you know everybody's going to think you're crazy. Nobody's going to want to hire you. Nobody's going to have anything to do with you. Nobody's going to want to date you because you're going to be labeled. You're going to get this black mark on you because we use those words crazy and uh, you know uh, elevator don't go all the way up to the top and so many different parts of uh, mental illness seeking help being a stigma. We we just buy into that. We play into that. What I'd like to say is this. My, my, my brother and I, when, when we were going through our entire family, no one sought any type of counseling. When I wanted to talk about the tragedy and what happened, I was quickly hushed. Our tragedy was treated as a taboo subject. When I received, well, I didn't receive the word. I was actually being nosed and overheard. The grown people talking about my mom being released from the mental state hospital. That caused so much anxiety and fear. And I was just uh, eight years old, going on nine years old. She actually stayed in the mental institution for two years for, for taking my brother's life. And when I heard that, I immediately uh, became very fearful because the first thing in my mind was she's coming back home to finish what she started. Because by then I knew my mom did kill my brother. And when I began to act out and I drew this picture in, in my uh, favorite teacher's classroom, I wanted her to talk to me. But instead, she took up my picture and she gave it to my auntie who was taking care of us at that time, helping our grandparents. And I received the, the worst scolding of my life. Wow. I received the worst scolding. And so what that did for me is that caused me to just shut down. I want you to know that we can try to bury stuff and not deal with it all we want. At some points, there will be some trigger. My mom's death was my trigger in college. And thank God I was able to go and, and talk to a counselor. And that was the first time I had actually opened up and really shared my story to a full length with anyone. Her response to me was, sure, you are a survivor do you know that you are a survivor i needed to hear those words because wow. i was really going through and i'm not going to even give this away but that's something even uh, not as bad as what my mom did but something very bad that also happens during during my story you guys you get the book you'll read that but that caused me a lot of anxiety and just being able to sit and talk to someone that, that really helped me tremendously, but that wasn't the end of it for me because after I fell in love with Jesus, the night I fell Ooh, in love with on. Jesus, come on. and he brought all of this back to me because my mom thought God had forsaken her. And at one point, I too began to feel that way that God had forsaken our family. Why would he allow so many bad things to happen? He doesn't love us. He doesn't love me. He doesn't care about me and my family. And when I fell in love with Jesus, when I met Jesus, and God took me back and showed me all the time that he was there for us, how he did not forsake us. The word tells us God has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. We can depend on his promises. You can take it to the bank. I'm telling you, God's promises stand, whatever God says. And so that was of the beginning of my healing, the beginning of that forgiveness that I talked about. And not just forgiving my mother, not just forgiving other people who were at the center of my hurts, but also forgiving myself wow. when I was so angry at God because he allowed so much to happen. Oh, I was angry at God. I turned away from God. He never Ooh, turned away mighty from God. me. He never turned away from me. And when I turned back, he was already there. He was still there. And that's when I fell in love with Jesus. And one of the things that God did was had me to seek therapy. We, we, we'll go to doctors for physical um, issues and problems. We have no issue with that. We'll go and we'll seek help. We get a broken bone or something. We're going to go to the doctor for that type of thing. God tells us in his word that he wants us to be whole all over in every area, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. So God desires that we be whole. So when we have issues, challenges with our mental health, we ought to seek help for that. We have, again, uh, this these stigmas that they are tearing our communities, they're tearing our families, they're tearing individuals Ooh, yes, apart yes, because yes. we continue to bow down and bend to the stigma and we refuse to go and get help, seek help for stuff that has happened way back when. There are so many people walking around with masks on and so many people walking around with these deep-seated hurts and wounds 
And they, they can't tell anybody about what happened to them for fear of how people are going to or how people might reject them, how people might respond to them. My but God. at the end of the day, my question to everyone, because I had to ask myself this question, the pros and cons, would you rather live a healthy life mentally, physically, spiritually, and be who God has created you to be? Or would you rather give in to the naysayers and the soothsayers and to the stigma and walk around, just bundle up and walk around in strongholds and walk around bound because you are ashamed to tell the truth wow, about wow, what wow. happened to you. You're ashamed, ashamed to tell the truth about how you're feeling and what you're going through and what you're dealing with. God gave us therapists. He gave us psychologists and psychiatrists and counselors. Why? To help us. And it's not like God just lets us go and then we're on our own. God is right there with us. And he knows what you and I deal with. He knows our hurts and our wounds more than we do. He knows the root causes. He knows why we act the way we do. Sometimes acting out. And wow. God wants us to live a blessed, fruitful, healthy life. And if that means going and getting help, seeking therapy, that's what that means. There's no shame in that. Wow. Acknowledging that we need help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of courage. And, and that's that's it's one a of sign the of courage. Definitely. And and Cheryl, that is one of the places that in our household households as as brown and black people, and I know definitely black people because that's my hey, I'm, yes, I'm one of the right we've yes. always taught um that what goes on in this house yes. stays in this house. Um and for the fear of, of forsaking or going against that rule, a lot of times things like this were not told. A lot of times things like this were overlooked because nobody was dealing with the issues. Nobody was speaking out and saying there was an issue. Issue. And so I believe, again, if you've not hear, heard or seen anything, um, man, this is definitely what we want you to grasp. And I'm going to drop this number here. Um, 988. Y'all know 911, but 988 is the mental health or mental illness crisis line, um, suicide prevention line. You can call that number or you can text that number, 988. Um, we need to make sure that just like people know 911 and 411 and all of these other um, 211 helplines that we know 988. Um, it's an opportunity, place, space that you are able to call and talk to someone immediately, instantly. And again, if you've not heard anything else, learned anything else, being able to talk to someone, um, if you don't know, and we heard... Um, Last week, a story that someone was sharing and said that they basically had confessed to someone that they thought of killing or harming themselves and didn't even realize that they were being walked right out of there to go to somewhere to get some help and, and, and got checked into a place and space. But that being able to say it out of your mouth is the first step to 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 healing, the first step to help, the first step to do something. And uh, someone uh, says there's no shame in therapy. Someone says that uh, I'm dealing with mental health issues, but I refuse to be silent. I talk and talk and don't care who gets tired of hearing it. We are grateful to God for you to be in that space and place. Continue to get that help. Continue to seek out those individuals that can be a resource to you. Um, and, and you yourself can be a resource and have just helped somebody just now by sharing that. And we are grateful yeah. to God for you, for Miss Cheryl, for her story, for all of this great and wonderful information. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting text messages over here. My phone is on silent. Um, it's actually on do not disturb. And I typically don't even check it and, uh, you know, while I'm on here, unless I'm talking to my boss man, cause he typically texts mm -hmm. me and tells me different things. But, um, Somebody said this is so sad yet so helpful. Um, somebody else said that this sad makes them cry and possibly my family member could have been enduring some of the same things and we didn't know. So I don't know if that family member is alive, but they said could have been. So I'm reading this that Maybe something has already transpired, but this doesn't have to be y'all. We can continue to have the Cheryl um, Freemans of the, of the world and share these stories like this. As you, you said something so profound, you said 
um, talk about it. What, what was the exact quote? You said share it and what did you so say? I said address the issue. Address the issue. And silence the stigma. And silence the stigma. Yes. Let's do the opposite of what we typically do. Definitely, definitely. Yes. That that is that is an amazing, 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 amazing. Um, Mr. Dalton said he's got to go. He's out in New York. We're gonna get you booked in New York so yes. you can share. I I, Mr. Dalton, I don't know if you're still here. Is she flying out or is she coming? <laughs> Mr. Dalton, I'm in New York this weekend. I gotta reach out to you. But um, Amen. Cheryl, you yes. we gonna fly. I don't know. We're going to get you on, on, on Mr. Dalton's yeah. show. Um, and I'm going to go back up to this comment he made earlier. And y'all, y'all know me. I, I can only stay serious for about two seconds. <laughs> then my face going to turn as red as my hair. And then my nose is going to turn red and blink like Rudolph. And then I'm going to be in here crying. And I ugly cry as every time I cry. I ain't never a pretty one. And uh, we don't want to do that because these lashes is already hanging on for life. <laughs> so I, I'm definitely not making light of the situation, but I have to pull myself out in order to be able to continue to talk. But Mr. Dalton says, uh, please be in the movie. So he's telling you to do the movie and me to be in it and he didn't gave me the part so he didn't wrote his own part he said your part would be a gospel radio announcer about the author coming to town and my second part would be after a choir in the church you would come to the podium and introduce her across the pulpit now let me say let me tell you about my people now he didn't wrote this, this little ah, he didn't wrote my part in the book out there. in the movie thank you so much Mr. Anderson for writing that in but here's where he wrote himself in here. Look, Cheryl, I'm going to give you this because you don't know yes. this. So in October, Mr. Anderson won an award for his radio show. I think he won a couple. Wow. And so the first one that he won, guess who brought him to the podium? It was me. I announced him as the winner for his award. So that's why he didn't put wow. all of that. He didn't put all of that in there. So we're going to get you. Yeah, we're going to get you. There it is. We're going to get this award winning. Um, get you on this award winning show out in New York City and let others hear about this great story, this great testimony, yeah, this great thing. It. And um, I'm, I'm going to get myself together and get ready to be in the movie. Miss Janice says she wants to. Miss Janice want to be in the movie. Now, Miss Janice said a little bit earlier, I saw that somebody in her family, a cousin, neighbor, next door, neighbor's dog, frog, somebody worked with your daddy at at, at, at the, was it Amco? Am she said somebody she believed probably worked with your dad there because they worked there. And so, so we're going to put her in at the extra, Please. at the, at the, at the yes. factory. So, um, look, and, and look, 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 Mr. Dalton. He's still here. He making like he didn't know that was the part. He took my shame on me. You sure did. See what I'm talking about? So, yes. Oh, now Miss Janice want to be an extra in the choir. I tell you, it's the Saints, man. They going to plug themselves in. I think all of y'all that are here in the fire choir on today should be a part of the movie. There's going to be a... We ain't even said nothing about no choir in the church. How did we even... Yeah, now there's a radio announcer. That's me. That's my part. Don't worry. About it. And I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. Yuda, Yuda gonna play herself. And so, and now my my mama's daughter done popped on here. And now she gonna be in the choir. <laughs> Jesus, I tell you, the people wanna be here. Now everybody wanna be in the movie. <laughs> I want. Oh, now Miss Nancy want to be an extra. She probably gonna be the pretty one standing on the corner, um, eating snacks or selling cookies to the kids or something. I don't know. They didn't wrote their own. That's my beautiful sister. Yes. Look. look yes. She said, but we went, you went to church. So now because you went to church, we done put a church scene in the book. I'll tell you, the saints know how to do it. It's in there. Church is in there too. So, yeah. so see, they they, they operating in the, in the prophetic. They yeah. operating. Yeah. The, Mr. Anderson is in the prophetic. That's Janice it. is in the prophetic. Now, this is the book I want y'all to go get. I want y'all to go get the book. It's right here on the screen. No Ordinary Sunday by Cheryl Battle. Freeman. It's a hyphenated yes. name. Battle Freeman. Yes. Go and get that. I don't want y'all to go to Amazon. Hold on. I see y'all clickers and typers. Y'all moving fast. Mm -hmm. That's not where I want you to go. I want you to go to NoOrdinarySunday.com. NoOrdinarySunday.com. Get this book. She's going to personally autograph it for yes. you. She's going to send you a little note. Tell her you saw and heard about the book on the Five Show. And she's going to call you Five Family or something. That's right. She's going to say something. I don't know what she's going to say. But she's going to get this book out to you, get it autographed, get it out to you. And again, we want you to purchase the book directly from her website because it gives her all her money. Amazon don't get none. We want her to get all her money. Um, and we want her to be able to continue to, to, to share this story. Um, buy the book. Mother's Day is coming up. What's coming up? Buy, put that in the Easter basket. Y'all out here putting all these chocolate bunnies in here for these cheering. Put the book in the in the basket. They don't need y'all make grown people baskets. They don't need all that candy. They got they got the sugars and they fat anyway. 
Oh, I need to drop the disclaimer on myself. They back is big like mine. They don't need chocolate bunnies and peeps and all of that stuff. Buy this book, put it in the basket, allow the people to see, hear, and know that God is real. Now, 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 Mr. Anderson done wrote himself in the book, sis. Okay. We're going we gonna, to we gonna work it out. He's going to be the city council person, <laughs> giving her the keys to the city before she comes to the podium. I tell you, listen, if if the people can write some stuff, they can write it. And But here's the key to it. They're not writing themselves out. They're writing themselves in. That's so what we can work it out. <laughs> and Miss Cheryl, yes. now my mama's daughter is over here asking for an Easter basket. <laughs> My mama's daughter is older than me. Do I look like I need to have anybody's Easter basket? So if she's older than me, oh then she ain't supposed to be having nobody's Easter. Grow up. <laughs> Get your life, lady. Listen, um, quite as this kept by I, I just stopped probably the last couple of years making my boys Easter basket. My boy, my oldest okay. boy, my oldest boy is 25. <laughs> and listen, that 16-year-old be looking funny. If ain't no eggs burled and on the counter for him, he ain't so much about the basket. But yeah, they they want them baskets and okay. carrying on. Um, okay. Mr. Dalton, we gonna get you a Easter basket too. But I'm gonna reach out to you. I'm in New York this week. I, I get that Friday, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out to you. Look for me. I'm, it's some stuff going on in your city. I'm doing down there. So yeah. But anyway, um, shameless plug. I tell you, the, the Saints they don't care what they say. Now, Miss Year, we've had. A roller coaster of emotions. You made my nose turn red once or twice, mm -hmm. and I almost started crying, but I didn't. I held on. Um, I know that this is an emotional thing for you, but in your venture, as you take this city nationwide tour, global, you're gonna take this tour. You're gonna share no ordinary Sunday with a multitude of people. What is, and I want you to look dead set in that camera yeah. and share with them the most valuable thing that you want them to gain from this book, from your words, from your life, from the life of your, your brother, um, from the life of your father, your brothers. Yeah. The key, most important thing that, that you want them to get. It's on the back of my book. And Yielded has, she had said it, and that is that God is real. She has said God is in control. So on the back of my book, I ask the question. I start that back with, did I ruin your life? That is the question that my mom asked me more than once. And in being very honest and transparent with you, initially when she asked me that question, I was much younger in my teens, and I would tell my mother no, but I absolutely felt like my mother had ruined my life. Uh, she had declared over my life that I wouldn't do any good thing and that I was better off dead. Seeing that on paper, seeing her quote uh, or her, her being quoted as saying, I plan to kill them one by one as they came in from playing, that had such a very substantial impact on my life for a very long time. That was then. When I realized who was really in control of my life through tragedy, through trauma, through struggles, through adversities, through afflictions, that being God, I tell you today that nothing, nothing can ruin my life or spoil the plan that God has for me because I'm a woman of faith Oof. and I believe what God says about me. See, when I... When, when I realized that my mother is not in control of my life, but that God is, that changed my narrative. That changed the narrative that I go by. Ooh. I used to identify solely and be so consumed and overwhelmed with being the girl and then the woman whose mother wanted to take her life. That was identifying me. But when I realized that God is in control, when I realized that he had a greater plan for my life, even when I was six, which is why I didn't go through that back door, his plan was at work even then. When I realized that, I could tell myself my mother did not ruin my life. What God has for me is still for me. 
And I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on God and telling you that he has given me some amazing things to do throughout the years. And I've been able to bless people and help people because I no longer, again, was caught up into what my mother did. Nor was I trying to prove to my mom that I was worth her love by trying to gain things. The more things I gained, the more empty I became. It was when I realized my greatest gift is in my service to other people. That is my greatest gift. That has given my life worth, value, and meaning for God to use me the way he uses me. So please, it doesn't matter what you've gone through. God is still in control. And whatever it is, your life has not been ruined. Whatever that thing was has not placed a period on your life because God is in control. You hear me, you, you're under the sound of my voice, you can hear yielded. That means that God still has purpose for your life. It took me a long time to realize that. But honey, now today I'm walking in that healing, I'm walking in that freedom, I'm walking in that authority, and I'm getting my voice out. And you just said it earlier. See, we overcome by the word of our testimony. And so I, I could not at one point share what I'm sharing with everyone on today, but I can do it today because it doesn't hurt like it used to hurt. I see God's purposes in it. Would I rather have had my brother survive? Would I rather have had my mother not do what she did? Well, if this is God's purpose for my life, and it is, this is his plan for our family, I submit to God's purpose and I submit to his plan. Y'all, we gon' we gonna take a break here. I I feel my face getting a little flush there, and uh, yeah, y'all don't want to see me ugly ugly cry. We will be right back. Don't go nowhere. Keep it locked. We're coming back. Um, we're gonna have our closing remarks by Miss Cheryl Battle Freeman, and we're gonna have a few I don't likes, and we gonna get up and get out of here. Keep it locked. Don't go nowhere. This girl yielded. We'll be back, y'all. All right. Listen, y'all, I just made the best mistake ever. Mrs. Morgan Turner is standing right here, but we're going to be interviewing Mr. Morgan Turner. So tell us a little bit about who you are, sir, and what you're doing. Uh, I'm I'm just a young guy from Baltimore. I was blessed to be able to uh, be the producer for Zacardi Cortez's imprint album. Uh, and literally, we just won two awards last night for Praise and Worship Song of the Year and Traditional Male Vocalist of the Year. So I'm just honored to be here and honored to be making an impact in gospel music. So did y'all hear that H-Town's finest, y'all? So this is Raise the Praise 100 Houston. He didn't know who I was. I didn't know who he was. So we brought two of those things home last night, y'all. So listen. Two of them. How many more are we nominated for? Uh, we nominated for another three. So we looking for five tonight, y'all. So we got two already. If you can do the math, two plus three is five. So we're going to get the other three tonight. So Morgan Turner, tell us a little bit more about what we can expect in the upcoming future. Uh, we can definitely expect the imprint tour to keep going on. That's going to keep going on until September. Um, definitely looking to produce more artists that are coming up in gospel and that are true to themselves and just are okay with doing gospel. You know, it's it's a great thing. We just gonna say, Lord, do it. Yeah, uh, uh. do it for. Yeah. Hey, listen, this your girl yields it. We gonna keep it locked right here. We gonna let them keep moving. They gotta go in there and get number three, four, and five. And so we bringing them back to H Town. Y'all know seven one three two eight one eight three two. We coming oh, back. Okay, we bringing it back. Anything else? Huh? Nope. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for all the support for Imprint. Keep downloading it. Keep streaming it. Tell us what your favorite songs are. But all we can say is, Lord, the Lord is doing it for us. That's it. I have got to say something to my sis because she's killing it. She's giving and giving and giving. The dress is dressing and giving. You hear me? Come on, sis. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey, if you can't say nothing, just say thank you. All right, thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. Bless you. Thank you. All right, y'all have a good time. Listen, they're going to get three, four, and five. It's your girl, Yieldit. Keep it locked here. Raise the praise 100 Houston where we're praising God all day, every day. It's your girl, Yieldit. We're out. All right, y'all, I'm going to let y'all hear a little bit of this because this is for me. God is. Antoine Hill. 
Yes, yes, God is. That was my good friend, Antoine Hilton, all the way out there in Long Island, New York, y'all. Antoine Hilton, God is. If you don't have that in your player, what is wrong with you? I don't like it that you ain't got that in your player. That one blesses me every time that I hear it. It pulls me right on in and lets me know that God is. Y'all, listen, it's 644. We got about 15 minutes before we get up and get out of here. It has been an amazing show today with Miss Cheryl Battle Freeman. Man, listen, so Battle is your maiden name. That's correct. Yes. Now, when I look, I've been looking at the name and saying it all show, but when I look back down here and saw battle again, it nearby took me in and out again, man, because this woman of God has been fighting a battle to heal all of her life. And I think you said 28 years it took yes. to walk in your healing and it looks good on you. Man, here we good. are in man. 2024. Mm -hmm. God is opening doors for you to now only yes. share your story here in Texas. You yes. about to be in New York City. I'm if you're gonna be on the radio you. or if you're gonna be I in, but yes. we're gonna hook that up with Mr. Dalton and we're gonna yes. get you hooked up and get you set up yes. to tell this story in New York City yes. and to write this movie and let me be in the movie and Miss Janice extra <laughs> and Miss Nancy gonna be in the choir and Mr. Dalton gonna be the city council and we're gonna give you the keys to the city and all of it. Don't forget none of these parts when you sell the story. Okay. Okay. They're not in the book, <laughs> but you got to add it's an addendum. Yeah, it's yes. an addendum. You got to add appendage or, a, yes. or, or something. You got to add that in there and call the publishers and people near them and let them know <laughs> that we don't add this part in there because they need to know that. But in all seriousness, this is an amazing, amazing book. Um, I've not even opened it and read it. I looked, you know, flipped through. I read this back part um, and Miss Midari tried to tell the whole story. Miss Darry tried to tell everything. Hey, Miss Darry, shout out to Miss Darry for this wonderful um, connection and hey reunion with my yeah. family. Because I tell everybody, I don't make connections and and and, and networks and all. This is my family now. This yes. is my cousin Amen. Cheryl. So Amen. get my cousin Cheryl. My cousin. Get my cousin Cheryl's book and um, man. Order it from the website. Do not order it from Amazon because I want her to get all her money. And Amen. so she can put all her money into her tour and all of her stuff Amen. that she got coming up because she getting ready to go Hallelujah. places with this here book Amen. and tell the people. But mm -hmm. Cheryl, we've mm -hmm. been extremely serious this entire show. And the people going to call me and ask me, mm -hmm. what did Cheryl do to you? Because you were serious the whole show. Um, and I struggled a couple few times to fight back some tears over here. One of the things... Miss Dar says, "Stop telling." Oh, I didn't. I didn't just tell you that Miss Dar's told me everything. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Miss Dar. Miss Dar's my good friend. Miss Dar's let me come to her church and tell jokes for her. <laughs> Miss Dar, is how Twinkie doing? L listen, Twinkie is is a senior at Miss Doris's church. Were you there that night? We came. No, no, I okay. Uh -huh. Miss Dar is this Twinkie is a is a senior at at Praise Chapel, and I was doing my setup there and. I was talking about that because it was like December. It was Christmas time. They had the lights and, mm -hmm. and they had all of the stuff. And I said, this looks like a place I used to work at on Friday nights. And um, <laughs> and I looked at and I said, Miss hey, Twinkie, that you? And we, yeah. So Miss Twinkie had glitter on her shirt. And so Miss Twinkie, I said, baby, you still dressed in like you dressed oh, when we worked goodness. at the club. But Miss Twinkie, shout out to my girl, Dumb Beasy from the Big Easy. She's over here. But at this time, Miss 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 Shara, you have managed to do something that most people cannot do which is to keep me serious throughout this entire show. Um, I had a couple, two, three times that I, I tried to stray and then you come right back in and I was over here holding back the tears again. But on the show, typically at the six o'clock hour, we do one of our favorite parts of the show. Most people, I ain't going to tell no lie, I'm going to tell the truth. They either listen in because of Cousin Al with the dedicated news or they listen in for this part. And I'm going to just drop this for you, okay? Do you ever sit and think, I don't like it. This is an opportunity for you to share on this segment. I'm like, I don't like it. 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 
Stochera. Yes. I know you heard that and it sounds super silly, <laughs> but I don't like it. Is a word that we own here at the Fire Show. We bought it. Okay. We we trademarked it. Oh wow. Okay. I O N L I K E I T. I don't like it. Okay. And it's simply, you know, you've been to a lot of churches before. They have testimony period. Mm -hmm. So here at the Fire Church, our testimony period is a little different. You know, some of the old church they start out with a hymn and they sing out loud, just bust out and scare the bejesus at you, and then they testify. Some of these new age churches, they come up to the front and they testify, I mean, testify and they share what, you know, God has done for them. And some of them fabricate and stretch the tooth and all that kind of stuff. But here at the fire church, our, our testimony period is called I don't like. Mm -hmm. And it's just an opportunity for you to share something. You know, we share about the goodness of God all the time. So we don't need to do that at the I don't like period. It's a point in place where we just tell what simply we don't like. And it could be good, it could be bad, it could be ugly, it could be Brussels sprouts, it could be big butterfly eyelashes. And I typically give people an example and it grows week over week. <laughs> and because I keep seeing it. One of the things that I saw just today alone is I don't like when grown people come out of, come out of the house in their pajamas. I don't like that. Your pajamas is for, for the house. They bed clothes. You wear them to bed. You don't come outside with them on. I don't like when they wear these bonnets all over the world in town and place. They be in the airport. They be in the grocery store. They be everywhere. I don't like it. But some of them strategically share them. Take the bonnet off or they have the bonnet because they didn't went and got the hair did. But they got this thing that they doing right now that I don't like. I don't like these wigs that's got that lace and stuff around here. And they, they glue that lace down right here. And then because they don't want you to be able to see the lace, they take and pull all this hair from underneath there and out of the wig. And they lay it down on their head with dippity do and carrying on and all kinds of stuff. And they swoop it. Now, look, I'm going to see if I can touch home. I know you said your grandparents is part of your life. <laughs> They, they take and lay this hair down and then they swoop it like this and it look like some of Big Mama's curtains. <laughs> and they calling it baby hair. First of all, you 972 years old. You ain't got no baby hair. And second of all, why is you laying it down <laughs> making it look like a curtain valence? I don't, I don't like it. But Cheryl, even more so than the baby hair. I don't like that this here same wig Got a part down the middle. Shout out to my sister who caused the permanent part in my head because she won't comb my hair. So she combed it the same way every day and she busted down the middle. So when I comb my hair, just fall open in the middle. The parts like the, the red sea. And but back to the, the wig. The wig is bust down the middle. But you know, it's got the net in there, the mesh or lace or whatever that is in the middle of that part. And so they don't want you to be able to see it. So they take some. Laurel, Clairol, Mary Kay, Mac, somebody, I don't know. And they paint it with the makeup right down the middle. But here's the part I don't like. I don't like that the makeup don't match their face, they neck, they elbow. It don't match anything because all three of them places is typically a different color on most of us. But they take that makeup and put down in the middle of that, that wig and it don't match nothing on their face so you can see it. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> and then, I, this is my last one on this curtain, wig, baby hair, makeup, confusion thing. It's a spirit of confusion altogether. You're an adult with baby hair. That's the spirit of confusion. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you, your wig is unstable. But this is the part right here, Cheryl. You got this wig on with this baby hair that's running into your big butterfly eyelashes. You got this makeup that don't match nothing in the middle of it. And your head starts to itch up under this here wig because it's been on your head probably since uh, Hick was a pup and they didn't have puppies and they done died and they done died and they done died. But you ain't washed your hair underneath there. And so now you want to scratch and, it, and dumb bees say they got a nappy back. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. The little BBs is hanging from under there. Yeah, that part. The kitchen is don't don't match the straight silky hair. But dumb bees it. Cheryl, here's the part that really gets to me. Beyond the, the baby hair, beyond the makeup, beyond the eyelashes running into the hair. Your scalp is itching. So now you won't scratch it. And you do this. 
Can y'all hear that? They go to patting and beating on their head. I don't like it. I I, I, I think it, when they give you the keys to the city in the movie, <laughs> that you need to ban the wearing of these front lace, lace front wigs and the beating of the heads. Because it's it's not a God. God is not pleased. He's nowhere in that makeup, that part, them bangs, them curtains, none of that. But that's just one example, Cheryl, of I don't like. Now, do you have an on like? I was trying to help you get yours ready. You got one. Share this ticket over there, y'all. She don't even know what to do with herself. See, she only got to see the serious side of me the whole show. So she had no idea that that was coming. But why you get yours together, Cousin Al, our, our dedicated yet ghetto newscaster, is over here. He said he don't like that it's dark 30 when my cousin's leaving the station. The time has changed. Listen. Listen. I'm okay. It's it's light outside. And when it's not light outside, <laughs> know that I'm heavy. Listen, it's a cross body. And when I put the cross my body, listen, I got easy. You see how gently I'm putting it across my body? You see how easy I can access what's inside? So fret not, brotherings, uh, sisterings and cousins. Listen. Uh, the Lord thy God, thy father has made thy many times richer and uh, smarter and wiser and smith and westernizer. If I, if I need to say anything else, I will, but I think you got it now. So don't worry about it. We're going to take this and gently place it back down under the table. Uh -huh. Come on, come on, gently. Now, now, Sister Cheryl, Cousin Al made me act up. <laughs> Dumbie used to say, night, night ward, night ward. Mm -hmm. He said, permit to carry the word of the Lord, sword and shield. You hear me? Yes, the Bible says, peace be still. And it is still. <laughs> oh, my dear God. So do you have, Sister Cher, we got about five minutes left. Do you have a, 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 a I don't like? My own like is so very boring. I don't like lava beans. I forgot to give you the rule. I forgot. Yes. Okay. You What's can't the say I don't like. We don't own that one. Oh, okay. We own I don't. I don't. I, I they, oh, like come on, practice it one more time. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh huh. L i k e i t. I don't like. So yeah. So yeah. You gotta eat bona fide. I know you. You was educated and you done wrote books and carrying on and stuff and things. And now you, um, cousin Al, I got it right here. Don't worry about it. I got, I got my, I got my curfew. Yeah. So one more time. Start over. Okay. Uh, I don't like. Oh, oh yeah. Y'all see that? Uh huh. Uh huh. Lima beans. I don't like lima beans. Lima beans. Today, listen. You cook them, they still hard. No matter how much season you put in them, they still don't taste good. Lima beans. They bland and they they okay. hard. Yeah. She don't, she don't like. She don't like. Every time. Listen, mm -hmm. I, I like lima beans. I like the big white ones. Mm -hmm. I don't like them. Mm -hmm. I like lima beans. No. I'm, I'm like that y'all was giving Cheryl these hard lima beans. My lima beans ain't hard. <laughs> Listen, y'all. Janice, do you have an own like? Dumbeezy, do you have an own like over there? Man, y'all, do y'all, you, you, you listen to um, KTSU? Yes, ma'am. You listen to Dumbeezy on Fridays? No, ain't you on Fridays, Fridays Dumbeezy? Yeah. I might be lying. Ain't you on Friday, Dumbeezy? What time you on? With the happy hour. I think it's on Fridays. Dumbeezy from the Big Easy. She be doing that there for that there. So if you like that okay. that good old, good old, uh, good old music, she okay. be mixing it up. Right. Uh, Dumbeezy be, listen, Dumbeezy, somebody was talking about you last night. They told me, they said, man, you are jamming everybody on the station. It's between you and Chili Bill, they say y'all, y'all yeah. killing it over there. So uh, shout out to my girl Dumbeezy. Um, she's also a comedian out here in these H-Town streets. She's a comedian yeah. everywhere. Um, Listen, cousin Al said your lima beans ain't got no flavor <laughs> because you ain't put no fat back in squirrel. That's it. Oh, oh, yeah, he's right about that one. <laughs> <laughs> She's been to say the fat back, but then she said the squirrel. <laughs> so you got to put some fat back and some some squirrel in there to make them taste good. Okay. And, and listen, Nancy says she don't like Houston's traffic. <laughs> you you from Houston, Nancy? She from Houston? She from you. Yeah, listen, I don't like Houston's traffic either. Now, the, now, let me tell you what I really don't like about Houston's traffic. Ooh. I don't like that you come off of 45 or wherever onto the Beltway 
and you like at a slow stop. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ain't going, you ain't moving, ain't nothing happening, ain't nothing going on right there. The traffic is just, and you on the phone talking to somebody because they ain't moving and you just done got irritated and got aggravated and you got to use the bathroom. You already know you got to use the bathroom. <laughs> you already got to use the bathroom. One, two, or three. I don't know which one, but you got to do one of them. So you, you're there in the traffic and for the life of you, when the traffic picks back up, there's absolutely nothing that has happened nothing. that should have impeded the traffic. Nothing. There's no accident. There's nope. no incident. There's no mechanical failure. There's nothing. And I use my words, not my word <laughs> on that day because I'm mad as I'll get out. Why, why is the traffic? And then here's another thing I'm like, I'm going to let y'all go because it's 659 and I'm probably going to get fired in the next minute because I managed to get through the whole day without fire, getting fired or quitting. <laughs> Although P-Man did text me and tell me to stop being ugly. Oh, he just, per look, I looked at my phone. I don't usually oh. look at my phone, but P-Man said, can you read that? Okay, I just purchased the book. Thank you. So P-Man is my P boss man. Oh. P-Man is the boss. He's the owner of the station. P-Man just bought the book. P-Man. Thank you, P-Man. We should read the book together so I don't get in trouble for my mental illness of being ugly when I text you. So let's read the book together. But, um, I usually get fired and all that good stuff, but we're going to get up and get out of here, y'all. It has been an amazing, amazing Tuesday. We are super excited to have had Cheryl. So again, NoOrdinarySunday.com. Buy your book from there, not from Amazon. Cheryl, do you have anything else you want to tell the people? Tell us where we can find you personally. Or are you just there? Or what? How, where, where, where can we find you? So you can, uh, again, thank you so much for this opportunity. Let me just say that. I thank God so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Yildy. Thank you for your manager. Thank you, Doris, uh, my sister and the audience, everyone who called in. I so appreciate you guys. Lord, every Sunday, Yildy has already uh, shared that. It's on uh, www.lordnerysunday.com. And if you'd like to email me, if you'd like to contact me, I can be uh, reached at the email Cheryl Battle Freeman. Just go all the way through Cheryl Battle Freeman at gmail.com. So if, if you want to email me, you have questions, or even want me to come in uh, for speaking engagement, Cheryl Battle Freeman.com. And that's C A email Cheryl Battle Freeman at gmail.com. That's C H E. R-Y-L, Battle Freeman at gmail.com. Yes. Cheryl, that's Cheryl. Listen, I don't know what's going on over here in this quiet stand, but these people is talking. Cousin Al said to, I know that ain't Nancy, a.k.a. Shay Shay, who got the two-story house in Pearland that did my taxes and got me oh. 9000 back that year. So we going to end on that note because it looks like the IRS may be investigating something and we don't want to be a part of that. So again, y'all, I want you to know again at the end of the day that mental health, mental illness is a real thing and yeah. we encourage you to get help, to seek out those that are qualified and trained. Listen, the Bible says that God gave us dominion in the earth and so that means that nothing that happens here in the earth is going to be God. He's not coming here to do it. He's going to allow us. So what I'm saying in that aspect is that those that are trained, God has equipped them with the knowledge and retention to retain what they've learned to use to help you. So please, brother and sister and children, whomever, reach out, get some help. Let people know that there is an issue and their scrolling on the screen is a number that I want you to begin to share with people just like they know. 411-211-911-988 is the mental health crisis and yes. suicide hotline. There are live active people. They are willing, ready, waiting, and able to help you in your situation. And so Cheryl, we're going to get ready to get up and get out of here because P-Man didn't fire me and I don't want to get fired because we done hung on. But yeah. I, look, I look. And just so y'all know, yes. I, I knew that number already. I, I shared that on my thing. I knew it. I knew it already. But Cheryl got it in her aura. Uh, in her uh, bookmark here, right here. It's in my book. Oh, let me put that right there. Y'all see that 988 right there? She got all of that good information right here on this bookmark. I got two bookmarks in my book. And I think she probably know because I'm going to go read the back first. See, I'm one of them people. I 
Don't worry about it. Worry about yourself. Get the book. Go to NoOrdinarySunday.com. Get the book. Reach out to Cheryl Battle Freeman at Cheryl Battle Freeman at gmail.com. Let her know you wanted to come to your church and talk about your, her book. Let her know you wanted to come on your radio show and talk about her book. Let her know that you want to be an extra in the book. I'm sick of y'all. Everybody want to be an extra in the movie. Mr. Anderson done wrote his self in as a city councilman. Done the radio announcer and somebody else giving her the keys to the city and Janice a uh, 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 extra and, and Nancy in the choir and I'm sure cousin Al want to be the news reporter on the scene and, and, and Januel over here probably want to be the next Rick James or somebody with his hey what's up where's Lee to the Roy is Lee Roy going to be in the in the movie is Lee who going to be in the movie oh lord now, now cousin Al is your kin folks now he okay. want to be Al Battle Freeman how you gonna be her, her her maiden name and her married maiden name? Which family are you kin to? You kin to the maiden name or you kin to the ma see? It's the saints. So let us get up out of here. Let us pray, cause God is nowhere in the rest of this foolishness. My pastor used to say, when this, when the Holy Spirit leave, you leave. When the Holy Spirit get up and go, you get up and go. And I think the Spirit done got up and gone. And I think we need to get up and gone too, cause I'm Al Battle Freeman. I, I can't. I can't even. Just don't listen, y'all. It had. Oh, Lord. Now Leroy in the movie. Now, I'm going to show you who Leroy is when we get ready to get out of here. Now, I don't know what part Leroy going to wear with his 1970 perm uh -oh. and these <laughs> shoes and boots and leprechauns and all kinds of stuff that he be. He, he, let's just pray and get out of here. P-Man, don't worry about it. We quit. Listen, y'all. It's been an amazing show on The Fire Show. We are super excited to have had Cheryl Battle Freeman here. This is her first time. Won't be her last time. We're going to get her on again. We're going to allow her to continue to tell her story. We're going to allow, yeah, we're going to let y'all read the book and then come back and we're going to all talk about the book. Yes. How about that? We might need to do it on the couch with, um, with Marticia because uh, Marticia, we have another young lady. They have a show here, the Save Them Silly Morning Show, and they have yes. a segment called On the Couch. Okay. And she's a licensed therapist. And I think we all need oh, to be on, wow. be on the couch and talk it. about this book because it's going to take us through a barrage of emotions. But I'm getting out of here so I don't get fired. And I got dinner plans and day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Y'all know gospel gangster, gospel thug, Beverly, my road dog, rides with me, goes with, flies with me, go everywhere I go. She, We we got to go eat some crawfishes in a minute. And so happy birthday to her. I'm going to go see her in a minute. But listen, it's your girl Yields it. We about to get up. We about to get out. Just know that through Christ, you can do all things because he strengthens you. Yes. And the Bible says that your weakness is his opportunity. So let God be God. Show yourself weak and let God be strong. We yes. out. Bye, y'all. You should get your salsa. Hey! And I'm going to be the boss of it. All right, y'all. We up. We out. Love y'all. Thank y'all. Like and share this video. I apologize about the title. It was a mishap. That's next week's show. I'm going to fix it. I love y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. Hard to believe I'm something special. Can't take that from me.